Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. God has been good to us all. I hope you know that, Koinonia. Honestly speaking, sometimes we get used to these miracles. We get used to, you know, my prayer every time is, Lord, I know I'm the one you are using, but may I never get used to your power. It's easy. Coming here tonight, my prayer is not, oh God, move. Mm -mm. My prayer is, oh God, bless your people. I don't pray and say, Lord, make sure your anointing works. Um, that's, that's not a wise prayer. The issue is not for the anointing to work. The issue is that it be done as it is in heaven. Exactly what God wants delivered. And I just sat down. I said, God, you have been good to me and you have been good to us as a family of faith. So I think it's a wonderful thing that I don't think we should take for granted. Praise the Lord. In all your ways, this is already a word for someone, in all your ways, sometimes we are very quick to see what God has not done. Yet the miracle is in thanking him for what he has done. The last gentleman, his testimony blessed me so much. He saw that his brother or his son or whatever had something had started. Many people say, God, I'm watching. God will say you won't see the rest because you are not a grateful person. Ten lepers were sent. They were healed. Only one returned back and said, Lord, I'm grateful. He said, were there not ten of you? Where are the other nine? And he said, you, you are whole. So learn, learn to acknowledge everything. If you tell God, give me ten naira and someone calls you and say, I will give you money, start thanking him. Don't say, Lord, it has not come. Lord, the fact that you can think about that. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Learn this. My entire life, 80% of my prayer is thanksgiving. There is what God does for you. You almost feel guilty asking for anything again. Are we together now? The grace of God. While I sat back there, I was just watching this. I said, my God. Now, this gentleman. Think of what his testimony will do to the salvation of someone. These are the kinds of testimonies that will force unbelievers to go and think. You can't hear this kind of testimony and pretend they are called notable miracles. Are we together now? Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we bless you. Let your name be glorified. In the name of Jesus. Ezra chapter 6, verse 14. Ah, God. What's that song? Menei da kasoni haka. Menei da kasoni haka. Where's the gentleman? He's not here. Menei da kasoni haka. Amenea figo dia. It's a chant I like.
you please sit down and the elders of the Jews listen build it and they prospered how through the prophesyings of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo they prospered through the prophesying not through building materials they prospered they were building while he was speaking and the Bible says the secret of their prosperity was that there was the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo they said they built it and finished it according to the commandment of the God of Israel God commanded it the prophets prophesied it the men built it and the building finished are you getting what I'm saying now the Bible says they prospered not through the quality of their building materials they prospered not just through the quality of their leadership the Bible says they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet they prospered through the prophesying they were healed through the prophesying their lives changed through the prophesying these were prophets I'm sure when the prophets spoke to them they said okay let's watch to see what happens but they forgot that God confirms the words of his prophets when I found this scripture it blessed me in no small way so I can prosper through prophecy I can prosper through prophecy prosperity there doesn't just mean to have money it means to excel it means to do well that means my life can change you've heard me say it again and again that the prophetic is powerful when the prophetic is used accurately and within the context of its relevance there is no limit no limit to what it can produce very simple scripture tonight they build it so the bible is honest to tell us they were building but that the energy the spiritual factor responsible for that prophecy is not the dexterity of their building but through the prophesying not the prophecy the prophesying continual speaking not that he spoke once they didn't just prosper through his prophecy he's prophesying so he said in the name of jesus god bless you and they came back again we're building and he said you just build while i speak they prospered through the prophesying I have seen what prophecy can do the Bible is full of the wonders that happened to men when the spirit of prophecy was allowed to find expression the power of prophecy was classically shown in the vision of Ezekiel the Bible lets us know that Ezekiel was taken to a valley that was full of dry bones listen carefully the Bible says the bones were very dry. Not only very dry, the bones were not together. The fact that you cannot find it does not mean it's not available. The bones were there. They were out of sight, but they were still in existence. Waiting for prophecy to bring them together. Are you getting what I'm saying? For as long as a prophetic word did not come, those bones remained there. And then he says, son of man, can these bones live? He says, only thou knowest. And then he said, prophesy. He said, I prophesied as I was commanded. When God commands and you prophesy, he confirms. I prophesied not as I wanted, not as I chose to, but as I was commanded. And the next thing that happened was there was a sound the Bible says that shaking and bones began to look for themselves bones talk of structures structures son of man prophesy again to the four winds and say oh winds breathe upon this slain 
and he prophesied again as commanded and the bible declares that the wind came entered into these bodies without life and they arose an exceeding great army i believe with all my heart that's what god is going to do over someone's life son of man can this situation live again son of man can your life live again son of man can your finances live again can the fire upon your life be rekindled again can the doors be opened again again means once upon a time they were not bones they never started as bones they started as an army something happened and reduced them back to become bones that were very dry another incident the bible says that the sons of the prophet were with elisha and they said where we meet with you is too small let us go beyond the jordan and the bible says he granted them permission and while they were cutting the tree the axe head fell and one of the sons of the prophet said alas master for it was borrowed you thought that the prophet would sit down and say talk what do we do he said no where fell it and he showed him the place and he carried a stick a stick god's methodology sometimes can be strange but it works that's why you have to walk by faith listen very simple teaching tonight but it will change your life and he threw that stick and against gravity the axe head began to float another time there was hunger in the land of samaria the hunger was so bad that the bible records that women were eating their children nigeria has not gotten to that level i'm not sure of any nation in the world where people have been hungry i'm not talking of cannibalism as a spirit but that hunger will make a mother imagine your child and you look at your child and carry your child to the kitchen and cut your child and eat a whole child in one day two women remember that was the agreement there was no record that they shared that child with any neighbor or anything imagine the hunger that means it was not a natural hunger that will make people eat a a plate of food is not up to a child's head yet two people ate a whole child is that a normal hunger no and by the next day it was the turn to eat the child of the other woman and she protected the child and that was where fight came from that means hunger can bring fight that means one of the principles of peace is abundance that when there is enough there is love there is understanding is that true hunger brought a contention between two people who were once friends but that's not my point the king comes and then finds out that two women are fighting and the king gets angry and say where is this man where is this prophet let's 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 the anger what is happening? Why is this land in a state of famine and drought? Bottom line, the news reaches the prophet and all of that, the king wanting to kill him and all of that. And then the prophet prophesies and says, by this time, if the prophet said, abundance will come, it would have never come because he did not add a time component to it. Notice that every time the prophet speak, they carry the realities in the realm of the spirit that are timeless. They are called timeless possibilities. Possibilities with no time frame attached to them. It is prophecy that allocates the time for their manifestation. Listen very carefully. The realm of the spirit is a compendium of possibilities with no time allocated to them. Listen carefully. What you call time is only dependent on two things one that your life synchronizes with god's predeterminate counsel are we together or number two that by the power of prophecy a time is allocated to that possibility and made to find expression on earth it is this reality that can allow to shift things that would have happened in your yesterday 
but was hijacked by spirits because the realm of the spirit has timeless possibilities prophecy can shift what would have happened three years and bring it into your tomorrow and make it happen are you getting what i'm saying now very powerful remember you cannot do anything about time once time passes that's it but the bible tells us that prophecy is able to lift things and bring them into the future and rename them and give them dates to appear again so if a woman is supposed to have had three children in her 15 years of marriage and the devil hijacked her womb what prophecy does is that you can speak to that woman and God will take those children that would have been and bring them and the woman will be pregnant with triplets you see that prophecy the victory of the saints is at the mercy of their understanding the operation of the kingdom the victory of the saints is not just dependent on the finished work of Christ please listen the victory of the saints is not just dependent on the finished work of Christ the victory of the saints is dependent on their comprehending the operations of the kingdom what I call the ordinances of heaven God's system of making possibilities manifest that is the reason why we continue to press in the spirit like spiritual archaeologists exploring the height the width the depth of the ways of God and like archaeologists when we find something that we think is worthy of note we treasure it the Bible says the kingdom is like a man who lost a pearl is that true and the first thing that he did was he lit a candle and went to the room and started sweeping that room to find it the Bible also talks about the kingdom as one who went and found a worthy jewel and sold all that he had to buy the entire plot that entire estate so we continue to search and the Bible says everyone that seeketh finds if you are serious enough and desperate the spirit of revelation will come you will never find the secrets of the kingdom being casual lord if you, if you will show me show me are you not god open my eyes let me see no you will not reward anyone who approaches you with that kind of laxity you can discern diligence he is the rewarder of not them that seek him them that diligently seek him lord i won't let you go open my eyes show me the key I, I, I admit that I don't know much but Lord open my eyes and then the spirit of revelation comes the angel came and told Daniel he said I am come to give you understanding Daniel prayed and said I'm not leaving this place Lord you must give me understanding about the times and the strategy and what to do 20 and one days he was there traveling and then the angel came granted him access to revelation and he said, I, Daniel, understood by books. It was not just a book like opening to read. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Yes. So, the, you must not only know what God has prepared for you. You must continue to explore the systems allocated for making it your reality. Ephesians 4 verse 18 is an anthem in this place. The Bible says having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them alienated that means that your life does not become a reflection of what god has said and the bible says it doesn't mean he lied but that something about your life and my life there is a level of understanding understanding of what not just an information the ways of god are we together now please give me this this is a bottle of water look up please everyone this is a bottle of water now it is true that swan water gives me a guarantee that if i open this bottle i'm going to have an enjoyable experience is that true now you have given me the bottle 
but there is a technology to open it if you turn this thing clockwise it will not open is that true the system of opening it is to turn it anti-clockwise and keep turning it until the lid removes as simple as this instruction is you can die of test not because you are not powerful enough to lift the bottle you can struggle turning this clockwise and then it will look like swan water scammed you whereas there is a deficiency in your understanding now notice that you can do this and grow old doing it and a little child will come and say my daddy taught me come let me show you and just turn this and in two minutes the water is there for you to take it's a little key that opens a very big door how many of you have lost your key and you had to stand outside you can see the yam from the window but you can't eat it why because a key between you and whatever it is that you prepared someone was careless enough to make sure that key was missing a small key that you can put in your pocket yet that key kept you outside as educated as you are you are still outside as rich as you are have you ever lost your atm and you stand angry as rich as you are they just made a transfer and you are hungry the atm is looking at you you are looking at it the difference between you and your breakthrough is that atm imagine how small things cause big trouble small key atm that's the same way one spiritual principle you should know that may be the missing link you've done step a b c d step e which is the last step you may not know and stay there for 10 years until god by his mercy comes for some of you that last step is what you are getting tonight you have prayed, you have fasted, you have done what you need to do. Hannah went at Shiloh. The Bible says Hannah prayed and prayed and prayed. And they looked at her and thought that the woman was drunk and all of that. And, and the prophet looked at her and said, I mean, what kind of irresponsibility is this? You are drunk in the temple? And she said, no, my Lord. She was communicating her travail. All had been set except prophecy. We don't just build with intelligence in this kingdom. We build as prophecies upon us. They build it through and they prosper through the prophesying of Haggai. Are we together now? And the prophet spoke to her and she had a child supernaturally. It looks very simple. I have prayed for people and sometimes spoken over their lives quite honestly, jokingly. And I've been amazed at the way God honored it and their lives changed. Could this be the missing link? That you have done what you know. The shop is already there. The goods are already there. But for some strange reasons, the customers do not come. Your certificate is already there. The application has been submitted. But you are building with intelligence. You are building. But the prophecy that will make that building finish. The Bible did not say they started building. It says the building finished. This is a secret that worked in my own life. This is the secret that is working in this ministry. They build and they finished through the power of prophecy. I continue to explore the wonders of prophecy, especially the creative dimension of prophecy that you can speak over someone's life you can imagine this dear lady and a prophetic word is spoken let me tell you this you know i told you something anything that is a blessing is not tangible it's not physical whoever gives you anything that you can hold and calls it a blessing yes we say that you were blessed but the truth is you were supported blessings are always spiritual read your bible you don't bless men with what money can buy. You don't bless people with material things. So I can give you money. You say I bless you. It's true. But the truth is that what the blessing is not the money you are holding. The blessing is the favor that brought that money. That's what you are giving. So if you have the discernment when you go to the shop, you drop the money, not the favor. Your lack of knowledge can make you take that money with the favor on it and drop in that shop and leave. And the owner of the shop just collects your money. 
and adds it in the midst of that and he's surprised in two months he has opened another branch he doesn't know what happened whether you know a law is there or not once you engage it it works for your favor or not for your favor I jump from here by mistake, I will fall. Gravity will not say, no, I'm aware he's joking. It's an example. No. There are no examples with laws. You don't swallow food and then the food says, I won't reach your stomach. I know you are. I will, I will come out when you... No. Laws don't care whether you are joking or you are serious. They work. Bishop Oyedeko would always say that God told him while he was, I think, in the U.S. He said, get down and make my people rich. Yet, he doesn't necessarily organize business seminars or symposiums. You would think that, okay, he should be teaching people the dynamics of finances and all of that. And then this man would say, okay, come with everything you are building. My job is to keep speaking while you build and you find out the buildings always get completed when you build while a voice is speaking it must finish the same way a voice was speaking while God was building God himself used that principle in Genesis chapter 1 and God said and God said before he would do anything he would say let us do it and then he would do it when there is your formula for building alongside the prophetic that building must finish no matter what it is are we together now yes many of us build we get the raw materials and then we say based on this and that and that i will build this great destiny in the name of jesus we we can be well-meaning and then we start the building and find out that at a point we are pegged to our surprise and you can't trace based on your architecture nothing is wrong that building is supposed to finish yet it does not finish because there are laws in this kingdom we build and prosper through the prophesyings not just through intentions It was Bishop Oyedepo who would share his experience with Archbishop Benson Idahosa that he carried a seed, you know, he came and he was going to run an errand for him. And he ran the errand very fast and came and waited for him and he looked at him and wanted to reward him. I hope I'm right with the story. And then he opened, you know, a compartment full of money. And then Bishop Oedeko would not take and say, no, I don't want this. And he looked at him and blessed him. And he says, from today, God has given you the grace of on time. That before a need arises, the supplies are there. Now, that's how to bless. So he can now go and build because there is prophecy. Listen, unbelievers know this. They prepare their work together. Then they now go to dark powers and say, I'm ready to build. I'm ready for election. I'm ready for this. I'm ready for the scholarship. I'm ready to build the business. I have done everything. I just returned from Harvard with my certificate. But I know that a body without a spirit is dead. Therefore, let there be prophecy on it. They carry that thing and they finish what they have started. God is a finisher. That means that when the hand of Zerubbabel begins something, that hand should complete it. But the systems that make men complete the things that they want to do, that system is largely not understood. And tonight we are going to use one of those keys. The power, not of words. There is a difference between words and prophecy. Words are utterances. They are powerful on their own. But prophetic words are utterances that are directed and backed up by an, an anointing and God's integrity. You don't prophesy, you don't speak as you are commanded. You speak, you are a human being. How are you? But you don't prophesy just the way you want. You are commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. We had a very strange 
miracle that happened in Kano. Those of you who followed, it was a very strange miracle. I don't know whether they were Christians or not. Brought in somebody who was mad. Those of you who were there or followed. And that gentleman was that didn't even know he was in a church. And the one that touched me most was someone three days had been in labor. That baby would not come out. And while I was speaking, the gentleman got angry and called the phone and said they should give it to him, put it on the loudspeaker. As I was speaking, there and then, the woman gave birth right there in the hospital. Someone that they were saying after, maybe if they would induce or do something or maybe a CS or so, and the baby just came out like that. When the systems of the kingdom are put in place, you will wonder at the power of God. The potentials of God are short-circuited when his systems are not understood. So, we, he continues to be misrepresented in our lives, which is not a product of his inability, but the product of our not understanding his ways. Are we blessed now? There may be a man of God here. You have done all, but that one thing you need is the power of prophecy. Jesus went to the temple from age 12. He had been preparing and doing everything. But at age 30, he went to look for a prophet. And John said, I won't baptize you. Jesus said, you are joking. Suffer it to be so. It's an ordinance. It's a formula. And when he came out of the water, the heavens opened. Jesus, the word, was under a closed heaven for 30 years until prophecy opened his heavens. So the fact that you are carrying the word, it can be under a closed heaven. Prophecy opens it up. The word for breakthrough, the word for speed can be under a closed heaven. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, my heavens must open tonight. of the Jews build it and they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai. They went forward through the prophesying. They got jobs through the prophesying. They carried their miracle children through the prophesying. They received mantles and graces through the prophesying. Their lives turn around through the prophesying. Shalakata prakato serekaria. Make sure you are praying. spirit come hold this for me no Jimmy, don't worry let him do it hold the tray not the water put it down and hold the tray this is how words are in the realm of the spirit it is not the words that bless you the words carry things words are trays in the spirit it is not the words that bless you the words contain mysteries so the word can carry a cause. The word comes to you and returns back, but the cause remains. The word was a messenger. The word can carry a blessing. You can receive the word. It returns back because words are living, so they move. When they come, they go back. Words don't remain. It is what they carry that remains. So shall my word be that goeth forth. I send it as a messenger. When it delivers, it returns back and says, I have done what you sent me to do. Then he sends the word on errand again. Listen, words are not just talkings. Because when Isaac, listen, blessed Jacob, 
Esau came and said, don't you have any other thing? He said it is finished. Was the talking finished? So words are not just speaking. You are a boy. Yes, you said that is word in English. But in the realm of the spirit, words are the factors in speakings that contain spirit and life. So I can sit down here and put favor on a word and send it as a messenger. The courier system is called prophecy. So you can the moment you see words coming to you, you start rejoicing because you know that the words is like it's like you know, I I, I do a lot of conga and jumia, and sometimes they just call me and say, We are within vicinity, can we come? And the moment I hear the sound of their van, do I need the van? Do I need the package? The package that comes will say conga. I quickly open the package, then there is another package. I open everything till I get what I'm looking for that thing the van will return back because it needs to come back again but what it brought is what stays with me many of us waste words because we think it is in the speaking be blessed that thing is not the english it's just a word prophesied to you it transported something spiritual so when it enters your ears the thing that was attached with it drops in your spirit and then the be blessed English now just goes out. So you know that words were spoken. And then you can't even remember everything that was said in the service. But then you go back and find out your life starts changing. Someone who has no business blessing you. And you say, Lord, when did that happen? That is why deafness is a terrible thing. Are we together now? That you cannot hear. The word cannot come, the entrance of thy word. So, listen to me. Understand how this works. Come, stand here. This gentleman, just stand here. This is favor. This is what this guy wants. This is favor. This is what he desperately needs. And God carries that favor and puts it upon words. And the messenger is not a prophet. The messenger is the prophecy. The prophecy is what brings it to him. As many as received him, meaning you can reject him. The word can come, but you will say, it's not trade that I want. I need this. And then the word returns back with the gift and say, I was rejected when I got to that address. Then when you pray again, God will say, by my mercy, let's try again. And the word comes. And you don't receive it and it goes back he sent forth his word when they received the word the word he led them the word delivered them so he sent forth healing he sent forth deliverance but they were carried in a tray called words this is the mystery men receive that's why when you see people talk about the word word most people even those who teach it they don't even really fully understand what they are saying they think it is speakings that gives you intelligence no words convey information they convey thoughts but that's not the only thing they do they are mighty systems of impartation words i can be sitting here right now and yet i'm ministering to someone outside because the minister is really not me. The minister is the word. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That means no matter where you are, the moment the words begin to come. And the way God designed it is that it is your faith that determines what is put on that word. So I can sit down and say, Lord, send me a word for my breakthrough. And God will say, that's it. Everyone that asks it, receive it. And he puts that word. And you will hear me speak casually in the name of Jesus. Let doors be open. And you say, that's it. You did not see that that word was carrying something. You receive that word. The miracle in it will start working. You don't receive the healing. You receive the word. The healing was designed to work when the word is received. When you enter a city Jesus was teaching find out whether there be a house of peace when you find it there 
it says let what is on you rest there when you don't find anybody that receives you let your peace rest with you meaning there are things that rest return are received are rejected these are some of the things that govern the results that we get look at the wonderful that adorable lady that shared her testimony from lagos words transcend time and distance and she can receive that word for her brother or friend and hiv of 24 years when the word gets to hiv hiv is a spirit so it knows it's not words that is seen remember when men saw the word they saw a man when demons saw the word they saw the life-giving power of god they looked at jesus and ah you see not this guy this this 33 year old body is fooling people this is not 33 year old this is the ancient of days hidden in a 33 year old body but men were looking at the son of mary but principalities and powers knew what they were seeing when a prophet saw jesus he said behold the lamb you would think it's an insult you are calling me an animal he was speaking prophetically the same way you can look at gideon and say oh mighty man of fellow and Gideon says, where are you seeing this? Because the word is also a mirror. The same way native doctors use water and look at your destiny, you can use the word and look. There's a beautiful picture most of you have seen of a young cat that looks at itself through a mirror and sees a lion. Very powerful. So you can come here weak and then... God comes to you and says no you are not supposed to be that and he says this is your image and he says Lord I agree I see it the word is received the power as many as received that word he gave them power that came with the word to become power to become as many as received him even to them that called upon his name he gave them power to become power to become an apostle power to become a prophet power to become prosperous power to rise and shake whatever it is that brought you down power to silence the voices of darkness thank you this is how fathers blessed throughout the bible all the sons knew that they didn't they didn't wish for any inheritance of goat or sheep they gave them those things but they knew it was temporal but the moment they received something on their head, the fathers told them bye-bye and never cared to find out, are you doing well? Because they knew that what they sent them with was designed to make sure that all things work together. Let me tell you, if someone counts, come Sam, come this lady. If this is a husband and wife and you greet all of them and give them plates huh? or you give them cup or a set of tea you gave them gifts not a blessing now there's nothing wrong with that they will carry those things and somebody can steal it but when you speak over their lives those words remain and start working so this guy was supposed to fail remember when he gets to the place where he wants to fail that word is a spiritual buffer it starts doing something to him to make sure he goes away from trouble there was supposed to be trouble ordinarily he would have been a victim but something that was on him will move him the lord knows how to deliver the righteous there is something that you can receive and where there is a job that is your own you find yourself moving there you are not moving something is moving you there this is what creates favor in life it looks like a repetition of coincidences everything good that is about to happen you call them they say i just heard about it must you hear about everything good then th that grace makes sure that nothing good passes you without you not hearing it the same way someone can put something negative on this lady and she will come someone wants to marry her and what is on her will make sure that guy hates her and everything destroy i say what is is it that i'm not beautiful it's not about beauty it's about what happened that's why the bible says god can deliver men from six things yes seven things one of it is the scourging tongues of men that men can use words to program something on you and just say go 
Now, you will, because you didn't feel anything, that word remains. This gentleman is standing here. He's supposed to marry her, but something on her is fighting him. You are supposed to get a job. The person promised heaven and said, and just a signature to get that job. But something on you, make sure that your paper is taken away from the list. This is what we came to correct tonight. That by the power of prophecy, that, that something can come upon your life and you will walk out of here and see things that should not happen. Someone can look at you and say, man of God, you are not supposed to move at this spiritual rate. When did you get born again? And you say, it's not my fault. It's what is on me. Something on me draws the right people. And you find out, listen, listen. That's why you find out there are churches. You always find the right keyboardist, the right drummer. They are looking for pastors. You find the right pastors. And it's not as if the people are eloquent enough to look for them. There is a spirit. Somebody enters that town and says, I want to come and fellowship with Koinonia. They didn't just come. The day you are announcing your book, that's the day the richest helper in your life is forced to come to the city. He didn't just come. Something on you controls everything around you. So the key is not to try to change things. Buy a new shoe with a negative word on your head. That negative word will tear that shoe and return you back to the way they prophesied on your life. Please take serious what I'm saying. Many arrogant believers will not hear this and will continue to move in circles and circles of shame and regret. In this kingdom, we build, but we prosper and finish what we are building through the power of prophecy. Hallelujah. You have applied for the job. You have submitted it. There's nothing you can do about it again. You don't even have access to the office. You can't call the director. Why don't you send words? Let words enter that office like an arm robber and search where is her file and sit on it. Listen, remember you can't get to the office. But there's something that can get there. I'm not motivating you. Believe me. And that word will rest on your employment letter. And the, the man is pushing everything. And he just picks yours. Now remember, the man may not be born again. So he can't explain what is happening. Because he operates in the three-dimensional realm. The word and the miracle of favor in it is speaking to his spirit man. And because he's empowered by God's integrity, he must hear it. And he looks and says, who is this? What tribe? Ah, I... The slot is for five people from the north. Who is this Yoruba girl now? Who knows? Maybe she doesn't have a father or mother. And they take this. And you get a job that you sit down and say, ah, ah, What is this again? If you don't believe this, then I welcome you to the realm of hardship and suffering. Where you can almost lose your salvation because of the squallow that comes upon arrogant people. You see people that you think don't deserve it, but they are childlike enough to allow words go before them. Are we together? In the Bible, every time fathers were releasing their children, they would tell them, place your hand upon my thigh. And they would place their hand and speak. Speak over their lives. And say, I've finished, go. Whoever comes again, they say the word has finished. I can talk to you. I can counsel you. But if it's that thing you are looking for, it has finished. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? Because we are going to be very, very fast tonight. And I want you to believe. The moment words are coming, don't just hear them as amplified sounds from a public address system. They are spirits. You have to discern it. They are spirits. Oh, may God lift you. It's not just by shouting amen. May God lift you. So the word is coming with a grace for lifting. You receive the word, but you are searching. Where is the grace? And that grace is on you. You go expecting to be lifted. It's as if life owes you lifting. Because there is a word there. And you will be surprised to see the way things just open. Are you ready to pray? 
find a corner in the next two three minutes i like you to declare declare and pray please pray take it seriously the things that must shift in your life the things that must change in your life is called a miracle service especially for those of you who came from far please believe
will rise in your family who said nobody will be blessed they can be raised praise part of the meeting Hallelujah. Look at me. We are praying. For those of you, almost everybody here uses one or more social media platforms. And a system was programmed that when you forget your password, there are times that you want to access your mail or whatever page. And for some reason, you can forget your password. There is a provision there. It will ask you, have you forgotten your password? And then it will try to do one, two, three things and give you another opportunity to put a new password or remind you of the password you forgot. If in the physical recovery is possible, then how, how much more the realm of the spirit? Someone tonight is going to insist. You... It left you to a point that you are not even thinking of it again. And God is saying, no, Lazarus must come back home. You must find it again. Before I begin to pray, open your mouth. Whatever left me that should not leave me, you must return back. Opportunities, dimensions in the spirit. cooperate with me I want us to finish very fast and so tonight I may not really have time to prophesy and speak to people one by one because it would take time but I want you to please believe are we together words can bring things and words can carry things out of your life was it not because Jonah entered a boat innocent people on a voyage a man carried something, entered their boat, they lost properties, lost, they were about to lose their life. And they said, what is the cause of this? And Jonah said, I'm the one. The solution, he didn't say, counsel me, throw me out of that boat. There are things that you don't patch, you don't manage. They must be thrown out completely. There are pronouncements, you must carry them and say, I saw you destroy my father, my mother. You are going out of my by the spirit of might. In the name of Jesus, that you will do a quick walk in this place. I pray, oh God, that within the next few minutes, visit your people. Let it not just be a ritual, but Lord, that you will visit them. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will visit them. I'm going to count five just now. Don't do anything. Don't shout. Don't do anything. Once I count five, I'm seeing a fire of deliverance. We're going to start with it because people must be set free. I truly believe in emancipation. And the Lord is giving me an instruction to just count five. And then I begin to speak. One, two. The things of the spirit are very strange. I want you to bring them out. Three. My God, I sense such fire. I'm already even seeing four get ready now five let that fire right now 
in the name of Jesus, everything in your life that must leave, I declare right now, by the power that is in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ, bring them out. Outside, everywhere, overflow, one, two, three, the roadside, online, I decree and I declare, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, the word of God brings every evil from out of their hiding place. I declare and I prophesy. I send the word like a messenger of judgment into every family, into every destiny. And I declare that everything that needs to be judged will not escape the fire of God tonight. Therefore, I declare judgment. Judgment upon the hand of the wicked. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Judgment upon the wicked. Judgment upon the wicked. Hallelujah. The spirit I'm taking charge over now are the forces responsible for closed doors. Listen, over life, if you have seen that you stand and a door refuses to open, no matter what you do, something is about to happen to you now. Lift your hands. Father, I declare, anyone here who is under the yoke of a spirit that causes closed doors, shakatabata, now you are ready to shout at the count of three in the name of Jesus. I judge that spirit. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I command those spirits. I challenge those forces. I send the word. Doors open. Ordinances that close doors. Let doors be open now. Over lives, over destinies. Be open now. Outside, be open inside. Be open in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me people and I'm seeing chains on their feet. And I'm seeing literal fire like rising from the ground of this auditorium. And I'm going to speak now. When I speak, those chains that I see, Sakotos Katabarakatojetia, you will be amazed at the testimonies that will rise from this month's miracle service. Lord Jesus, I declare, anyone being tied down by any chain, I declare right now, let the fire of the it could be chains that are territorial, it could be chains of wickedness. I command a release right now in the name of Jesus. I command a release right now. I command a release right now. A release right now. A release right now. what I'm seeing now for a long time and then I think last miracle service or so, I saw it again it's, it's a sign and wonder and I don't know why God does it, I'm seeing a map before me now and I'm seeing Kogi State, Kogi State you know what happens when God shows me this, that means people from that state, the power of God begins to touch them, right now in the name of Jesus I declare, the fire of God is going to that state and I declare freedom right now there are ordinances and yokes within that region. When you are from that region, the power of God meets you. I decree and declare now, in the name of Jesus Christ, complete freedom, complete freedom. The power of God is still coming, Kogi State. I decree and I declare, if there is anything that is not the planting of the Lord in any of those regions, I uproot it now by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Bring them out, please. Overflow one, lift your hands. I stretch my hands right now. I'm seeing a very strange fire. People will start running from overflow one. I'm, I've not prayed that prayer, but I'm seeing a grace for speed. This is the spirit of delay being broken. Overflow one, in the name of Jesus, I declare 
may that grace come upon people right now they will begin to run by the spirit run by the spirit bring them out in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ we are going to pray for the sick shortly but the Lord is asking me to stand here I'm standing here and I'm seeing right here just right here I'm seeing there is something the angel of the Lord is doing right here I decree and I prophesy right now in the name of Jesus let the yokes of darkness the ordinances of witchcraft let it be broken right now let it be broken right now For sick people now but I'm seeing the Lord is telling me he's taking away objects from people's bodies physical objects movements around the body that you feel movements around the body right now I declare anyone who has those experiences I stretch my hands now I stretch my hands now the Lord is saying I should stand here in the name of Jesus any movement in the name of Jesus, Sakato Barakata, Entekalakata Katakata, Rakata Bakatos, movements in the body. I cause it now in the name of Jesus. Everything that is not of God in anyone's body around here, I take it out of your body now. I take it out of your body now. Look at me, my dear, this lady. Lift your hands. I stretch my hands now. I saw fire coming on you. Right now, I declare that devil must let you go. I release you now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now, be set free in the name of Jesus. All those in front, I declare at the count of three, the spirits that manifested must let you go. I speak as one sent from God. At the count of three, let them go. One, two, three, go. Go, go, go. Out of their lives and out of their destinies. Jesus Christ. How many people are trusting God for jobs? You are trusting God for a job. Just keep your hands lifted. I just saw something that looked like a parcel. We are going to pray for the sick. But I'm stretching my hands. Fire is leaving my hands. I'm seeing from the realm of the spirit. And it's come not everybody. But in the name of Jesus, Lord, those that are designed to receive miracle jobs through these impartations, where are they, oh God? I send your anointing. In the name of Jesus, let there be miracle jobs to those people by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Oh my God. Now, I want us to pray for the sick. Who is Yakubu? Yakubu, where are you? Oh, it's even you, protocol. Come. Your season of lifting has come. Lift your hands. I'm looking at you. Where's your wife? Wife, come. Look at, oh, what a wonderful wife. Again, her husband. In the name of Jesus Christ. I speak and I prophesy to you here. Look at what is happening to them. I declare by the anointing of the Spirit, the month of November, two of you will come to testify here. The God of heaven is turning your lives around. One, finances. Two, I'm seeing you climbing ladders in the Spirit. And I decree and declare over you. It must be so right now. 
in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ if I start speaking one by one time sir please come this man come sir God is about to change your life come where are you come? please stand up please stand up sir where are you coming from from Sabongari I want to pray for you where do you stay sir I don't mean to scare you are we together now I'm not a prophet of doom but this you're coming here now has saved you from dying you have been having dreams you have been having dreams yes. dreams yes. that's what I'm saying dead people yes, you I see dead them. people in dreams I have seen them. this is what I'm saying if you did not come here I saw that you were somewhere around PZ and a car just came you're on a bike and that car just hit you and just killed you that's how they left you on the ground there but in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that the spirit behind why am I saying God is saving families from the spirit of death I just saw like an arrow right now any family here that any family I'm seeing like arrows of death I reverse them you will know because I'm praying for you I declare now now any family that the devil has found that there must be an obituary I command in the name of Jesus Christ freedom death leave the God's people in the name of Jesus the God of wonders will do wonders in their lives agree with them very quickly what you are doing those who are standing trust God to touch you trust God to return with a testimony who have come with all kinds of situations arise oh God in your power wrought wonders in the name of Jesus let your people return with testimonies in the name of Jesus amen and amen quickly please please um Accept the people speak to you and I would please let there be minimal um, personal speakings because we have to rush as hands are laid on you please believe don't say it's not apostle that is laying hands on me it's a corporate grace that is working here and for those of us who are seated the worship team will be ministering but don't just sit and just be looking I like you to believe because immediately after this I'll be doing the prophecy and the impartation and we'll be trusting God to turn things around if you have your prayer request while the service is going on whether you are here or just wave it and then there will be people PR protocol please join the people so that we'll make it fast Lord we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ God bless you and as we worship in your presence there is healing the Holy Spirit gentle
please make sure if you have not submitted your prayer request, do it very quickly. Do it very quickly. We'll pray one prayer point before you continue. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I declare and declare that every delayed promise say it again that every delayed promise must manifest before the end of this month. Lift your voice and pray. Pray, pray, delayed promise. Make sure you are praying. Every delayed promise in the name of Jesus, we decree and declare. Hallelujah. Hold on. Medically speaking, after nine months, when they give a woman EDD, sometimes it can seem to cross with a few weeks. The doctors give plus or minus. Is that true? And by the time it exceeds, it becomes an issue of concern. And then the doctors have a system where they can induce the woman or at least go through CS. It doesn't matter how that blessing must arrive. Lord, I declare it is time for me to walk in it. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Every prepared blessing that the prophetic word of God has made available, I step into it now. Jesus, I receive the grace to discern my miracle. Because you see, sometimes a miracle may not come in a way that you see it. Are we together now? Who would have known that it was the little jar in the house of the woman who was already owing that would save her? Sometimes your miracle is there. But God must open your eyes. Are you ready to pray? Say in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive discernment. Cause my eyes to be open. To see my miracle in this season. Lift your voice and pray. Cause my eyes to be open.
name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The last prayer point. I'd like you to declare. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, bring speed to my destiny. Let me tell you something. Except you are not living on planet earth. There are times that God will desire for certain things to happen in your life. But for whatever reason, those seasons can pass and you will not step into it. Now, God must give you speed to be able to catch up with what matches the pace of your life. Pray this prayer and you will watch God answer. Say in the name of Jesus. Lord, for my years of delay, I receive supernatural speed in every area of my life. Open your mouth and mention every area of your life. Lord, I would have gotten admission 10 years ago, but for some reason I was delayed. Give me speed. Give me speed. online I want you to believe pray believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ pray this is not a ritual this is not a formality there is an anointing there is a grace there is a covenant that makes for this request to be answered prayers Paul said for this cause I Paul bow my knees I bow my knees I bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you I bow my knees that he may grant unto you I bow my knees that he may grant unto you I bow my knees that he may grant unto you I bow my knees that he may grant unto you. Visit impossible situations, O God of heaven. In the name of 
Jesus Christ. Father, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, you have brought strange miracles to men and women by reason of this mystery. Father, I declare there are people here who have written things that only you can solve. Things that if we see with the eyes of men, it will even challenge our faith. My God, surprise everyone. Please agree with me. Surprise everyone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let every need represented here, whatever that need is, I agree right now in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Let every need here be turned into a miracle. Any human agent that has vowed that this request will not be answered, may the fire of judgment come upon them now. Remember, all blessings come from God through men to you. All blessings live from Satan through men away from you. All blessings come from God through men to you. All blessings live from Satan through men. So whether it's from God or from Satan, men play a role. I say it again in the name of Jesus. Everybody who the devil wants to use to play a negative role to sabotage what God has answered, what he has done in your life. Let the fire of judgment rest upon them now. Let me give you an instance. If God destines that you are the one who will lift your family out and be great, and Satan programs a man with a gun to kill you, you know what that man has done? He didn't just kill you. He stopped the word of God from coming to pass in your family. I'm saying it again. Any human agent, if you don't like it, just say amen to the one you believe. But any human agent that stands the way of prophecy over your life, may the word of God rest like fire upon them. When a man is supposed to give you a job and gets angry because something happened and packs all the employment letter and shelves it and they forget about it for the next two years. The guy to help Joseph came out and forgot him for two years. It was after two years by the mercy of God he said, I remember my wrong. So he acknowledged it was wrong. I pray whoever has forgotten you that must remember you, may they remember their wrong. And may they correct it. Every anointing and every grace that God preordained that should be resting upon your life, your ministry right now, and by some activity of darkness, it has not yet touched your head. I declare, may that unction rest on you now. May that unction rest on you now. May that unction rest on you now. Remember what I taught you about words. Never forget, words are trains. God is serving you something. He's only using words. Are you ready to receive the prayer of favor again? Don't say you have said it before. Remember that they build and they prosper through the prophesying. Not once. Jesus, your Jesus, touched the eyes of a man. And he said, what do you see? This is the word touching a man's eyes. He said, I'm seeing, but I see men like trees. Jesus said, nonsense. He touched his eyes again. And he saw men clearly. If he, if he was left like that, listen, we want, to, we want to destroy the spirit 
that are bought complete miracles. So the miracle starts in your life but never finishes. Have you seen people like that? It starts in your life but never finishes. In the name of Jesus. Because according to scripture, if the hand of Zerubbabel starts a thing, that hand should complete it. I'm praying right now. Every miracle that has started, when Elijah saw the rain like the fist of a man's hand, it didn't stop as a fist. It became an abundance of rain. Therefore, I declare, what you have seen like the fist of a man's hand, it must come to completion in your life. It must come to completion in your life. So you get a job, but they say you need an interview. You pass stage one. You pass stage two. They even give you small pocket money and you are happy. It's almost as if you are employed. Then when the final list comes out, your name is not there. A lady sent me a text crying that a gentleman came and paid her dowry and ran away. What did he do? He paid her dowry and ran away. It's better that that lady were never married than the one that you gathered people, they paid your dowry, then he ran away. Let me say it again. The Bible says, he that has begun this good work, except it's not a good work, what my God has started in your life, in the name of Jesus, it must come to end. Let me pray for your family that in the name of Jesus, whatever has brought pain to your family, whatever has brought shame, whatever has brought distress, right now I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit. We come from different families and we know the various challenges that we left from our different families. Therefore, I prophesy to you right now in the name of Jesus that every challenge you left from your family, let that challenge be turned into a testimony now. Let it be turned to a testimony now. Let it be turned to a testimony now. Now, let me prophesy a very serious prophecy for you. Everything you saw from January that God vowed with his integrity in the place of your retreat, he showed you things. You know it's not guesswork. You know that God told you certain things, but you have not seen it come to pass. I release my faith with you, and I command October to deliver the result for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Everyone who is in ministry here, I want to pray for you. Whether it's an evangelical ministry, you are a missionary, you are into a prophetic ministry, whatever is making it to not work, or whether it's a prayer group, a fellowship, I stretch my hands, I strengthen your hands in the spirit, fresh fire upon the work that you do. In the name of Jesus Christ, if there is anyone in anger, who made any pronouncement over your life? It could even be your biological parents. I stand here by the privilege of the prophetic and the apostolic and I declare that that statement is erased from your life. Those in business, I pray for you. I decree and declare the spirit that brings fruitless labor you labor so much and yet nothing comes to fruition I cast that spirit from its root now let me pray again in the name of Jesus that everyone trusting God for a miracle job I don't care how long you have waited in the name of Jesus the name that is above every other name I speak to you may the Lord surprise you The Lord is showing me a medical doctor that an appointment is coming for from Abuja, one of the hospitals in Abuja. 
as I just prayed this prayer, I saw it in the spirit. We establish it now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing someone, nobody has ever truly applied for a visa and gotten it in your family. It doesn't matter how many times they apply. And the reasons are legitimate. I speak by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. May the favor of God open the doors of nations for you. Hallelujah. One way the spirit of poverty, listen, eats up resources from people is through the mystery of terminal illness. Illness that your money must finish before the person now dies. Are we together now? It's a wicked spirit. Because you can't sit down and watch your loved one in pain. You will liquidate everything you have to help them. When the entire family is drained, then the person just goes. I declare, if there is anyone with any terminal illness that is sapping resources from your family, may the healing power of Jesus touch them and quicken them now. Favor is a spirit. I stretch my hands and I declare in the name of Jesus from today, carry strange favor. Carry strange favor. Carry strange favor. In one minute, wherever you are, open your mouth and let's pray for Kaduna State. Blood-sucking spirits will curse you. Pray. We declare peace upon our borders. Pray for the families that have been bereaved. Lord, by your mercy, let there be peace. We prophesy peace in Zaria, peace in Kaduna State, peace in Jos. Peace in Adamawa, peace in Benway. In the name of Jesus, the rod of the wicked will not rest upon the lot of the righteous. We fortify our spiritual borders. Please pray. Don't be like Esther who ignored Mordecai. Don't be like Esther who ignored Mordecai. We decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Kaduna, hear the word of the Lord. Let there be peace. We pray for the spirit of love. We pray for the spirit of love, the spirit of unity. Christians, Muslims, free thinkers, that together in the name of Jesus, there will be a bond of peace. Hallelujah. Number one, make sure you do not use the social media platform to your detriment and the detriment of the church. Are we together? passing nasty comments and things that may not make sense that can aggravate um, crisis and all of this we are matured believers we must have the wisdom to be able to respond this is not about Christians it's not truly about Muslims it's about the devil finding agents masquerading through religion and politics to destroy the program of God so the issue is not just about Christians it's not just about Muslims and all of this my perspective as a person has always been to demonstrate love because we believe no human being, regardless of religion, acts wicked on his own accord. They are motivated by dark spirits that manipulate their minds. So when we challenge, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So we speak and settle realities in the realm of the spirit. These are the spirits that can use anybody. If brothers kill brothers, then anybody can kill anybody when the spirits are at work. Our responsibility as believers are, is to challenge the controlling powers that manipulate the destinies of people. Number two, please, there are families that have lost loved ones. If there is any way you can support them, whether in prayer or through whatever means, it is a very welcome development. Are we together? And then finally, I would encourage us, we have prayed, but we are responsible people. It is wise to be vigilant, especially for those who live within the Kaduna metropolis and then Jos, Adamawa, Benway. We will continue to pray and speak peace. 
it says give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem so we will continue to pray but it's wise to be vigilant because there are certain kinds of death the Bible calls the death of a fool are we together now it is wise that we are vigilant by God's grace whatever information we have a brilliant intelligence system that feeds me with whatever information and if there is any cause for concern or any action there is an intelligence system to reach everyone avoid spreading rumors and avoid moving around your job is just to continue to pray for believers that have for any reason gone to be with the Lord it shouldn't start creating a subject of debate where we argue and do a lot of childish things when believers go to be with the Lord, let's stand by the families and encourage them and speak words of hope. While we continue speaking life, let me balance this. Because if, if God forbid, but if I die today, it does not cancel the fact that long life is the will of God for the saints. So on one side, while you weep and mourn for what has happened, the word of God is bigger than any man. I'm saying this because sometimes Satan uses these things to discourage the body of Christ. Let God be true and every man, including the best of us, be a liar. So make sure you continue to stand on your convictions. Be sympathetic to people. Don't be emotionless about the things that happen to people. But maintain your stand and your conviction about the integrity of what God has said should be. Are we together now? I speak to everyone here. The covenant of protection. You have to know the blessings that accrue to this ministry that you are part of. I declare in the name of Jesus, the grace that has protected us, the grace that has protected this, this ministry, may that grace speak in your life. I forbid the earth, nor the sword from receiving your body. In the name of Jesus Christ. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord, is the Lord God Almighty, is the Lord God Almighty, my life. My life is full. My life is full. Hey, and the people say, Holy, holy. And the people say, Holy, holy, holy. And the people say, Holy, Holy, is the Lord, is the Lord. My life is full of your glory. My life of your glory prophesy to yourself my life is full of your wonders my life is full yeah. my life is full full of your wisdom my life is full of your Holy Spirit, we declare tonight that you have absolute unrestrained access to our spirits, to our minds, and to our bodies. 
for you are the one given to us by jesus to help us understand the kingdom to help us understand his power to help us understand the majesty and the realities of the spirit we thank you we honor your presence we honor your wisdom lord i pray that tonight you will open us up again to the mysteries of the kingdom may we encounter your power may we encounter your light turn us into signs and wonders do this and bring glory to the father in the name of jesus christ hallelujah please keep standing first corinthians chapter 4 just two verses and then we'll sit down first corinthians chapter 4 paul made a statement he said let a man so account of us as the ministers of christ number one and then he calls them stewards, custodians. A steward is one who has been trusted with something. There are men that the Bible calls stewards of the mysteries of God. Stewards. Like I give you a Bible, I say, please hold it for me. And every time they are looking for that Bible, they make reference to you because you have been made a steward. In Matthew 25, he made other stewards of his financial resources. Is that true? So the Bible says, let a man, please keep it there. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ. But then much more than that, that we are stewards of the mysteries of God. Verse 2 says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Faithful in what? Faithful in communicating those mysteries. Moreover, it is required that if at any point by the grace of God, you are made a steward of any dimension of the mysteries of God, your assignment among other things is faithfulness. To make sure that you continually communicate those mysteries until the people that God has committed to your care rise to the reality. You see, stewards are dispensers. The, the whole idea is not for them to keep it. It is that it flows to the people. It's just that by the election of grace, they are the communicators of this reality. Stewards of the mysteries of God. Not stewards of preaching. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. With all humility, there are preachers, but there are stewards. Of the mysteries of God are we together you know that a dimension of God was allocated to certain personalities and the Bible encourages them to be faithful unbending ensuring that people enter that dimension I like you to open your mouth and cry to God in one minute and say Lord the dimension of the mystery that has been committed I receive it I receive it I receive it are we praying? Sapra koto supriyata palana bos. Lord, we thank you and we accept with all humility the privilege of being stewards of the mysteries. Stewards of the mysteries, the secrets of God. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Good evening, everybody. We're in for a serious time tonight. Just smile at someone close to you and say good evening. Are we together? Praise the Lord. It's always my joy to bring the word of the Lord. I remain faithful to this task. It's a grand grace in Jesus' name. I just want to specially appreciate Honorable. Honestly, it was a big surprise. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord. All the way from Adamawa State through Abuja and he gave us a big surprise. God bless you, sir. Thank you. John Terry from Adamawa State House of Assembly. God bless you, sir. The Lord honor you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. In this kingdom, 
we rise not just by desire but how much light we have accessed and engaged not only accessed i used to say accessed alone but i found out that was not very accurate we rise in this kingdom not just by how much light is available but how much light we have accessed and engaged you can access it meaning you are not in ignorance of his operation but not engage it you will not see anything we rise in this kingdom brothers and sisters on the strength of the light the illumination the precepts of the kingdom that we have both accessed and engaged accessing it is a product of humility and desperate pursuit but engaging it is the product of faith accessing the word is not faith it gives you potential to manifest faith until you begin to engage the word I've said it that faith is simply a product of understanding, obedience, and courage. Understanding. You cannot act upon what you do not understand sustainably. Obedience. The ability to do to the latter and the courage to stay there regardless of the temporary results that you see. Are we together? So may I remind us again that desire is not enough to rise in the kingdom. I desire to encounter the anointing. Wonderful. But that in itself will never expose you to dimensions of the anointing. I desire to encounter the spirit of revelation. Wonderful. But that will not bring you into those dimensions. I desire to walk in kingdom wealth and prosperity. Wonderful. But that will not bring it that way. I desire to live long i desire to live strong i desire to be a leader i desire to be great our society is full of desire that's wonderful it's a good starting point except for the fact that desire alone will not amount to anything people desire to be anointed they desire to be blessed they desire to receive miracles they desire deliverance they desire healing but they stop at the level of desire and then believe that that's all they need to do no desire sponsors the appetite and the fortitude for pursuit when there is desire you will defy every excuse you will defy every consequence and pursue your pursuit gives you access your desire gives you the inner strength the tenacity the staying power to pursue information pursue light pursue an encounter are we together then if and when you have that encounter you have access to it now the next thing is to put your understanding to work to engage that truth you know the engaging part is where i truly believe that the church of the lord jesus christ has failed very well i have said it again and again that i don't believe the church of god is in ignorance necessarily by the grace of god the servants of god scattered around nigeria africa and the world have done well commendably well in being faithful dispensers of the mysteries of the kingdom are we together yes we give that credit to all the pastors the prophets the apostles the teachers and all the people who have contributed in supplying dimensions to the body of christ bridging the ignorance that is in the body but the results have not been very significant because we have stopped at the level of access and we believe that the moment you find truth automatically it should produce result no sir no sir truth must be engaged engaged to produce this mic has great potential to amplify my voice so that people can hear both within this vicinity and then through the power of the internet across the nations of the world but until this device is engaged accordingly not engage as you wish there is a pattern engage accordingly then it releases the full strength of it 
I can drop this mic and shout and there is a mic that is capable of amplifying my voice but I can turn and live a very very hard life I have access to the mic but I have not engaged it accordingly is that true so please let us deliver ourselves from this this um, it's a combination of pride and folly that sweeps across the body of Christ that because we have accumulated a compendium of a lot of knowledge it automatically means that our lives will be a reflection no sir accumulation of spiritual information does not produce result it is the supply of the grace and the advantage of that grace that you take to engage to engage Engaging is very important. To engage means to put the, the word of God to work. You engage it and stay there. Then it is at the point of engaging the word that God's integrity is committed. There are many people when you teach on tithing, they will help you finish the message. But they don't engage it. They don't do it. They do it occasionally. How about those who do not engage the power of speaking the word in faith how many people know about the mystery of a dance the mystery of praise how many people really do it is that true it is the doing that's why when an evangelist finishes preaching it doesn't say now that you have listened to me you are going to heaven you can be in that crusade ground and go to hell you can even be part of the organizer and still go to hell at the end of it he gives room for engaging are you here and you want to give your heart to the lord and then people come out it is only those who come out that we pray for we bless everybody but we pray for those who come out as a sign that the message has touched them they have understood and they have responded in Acts chapter 4 the Bible says that Paul and um, Peter and, and, and John they were on their way to the temple and whilst they passed the beautiful gate the Bible says they saw a man that had been crippled from birth there at the gate asking for arms and the bible says that he requested that they helped him you know like beggars would do and then peter looked at him and said silver and gold i do not have any but such as i have i give unto you in the name of jesus he said rise up and walk access but the man was there the bible never said he got up then the bible says peter help me pastor alpha peter held his hands and forced him to engage you see it is at the point of obedience that the power is released not when the word just comes this is the dynamics of results until the word of god is engaged with faith and understanding the word of god is as barren as whatever it is so the bible says he held his hands and while he motioned on him to rest you see that at that point the bible says he leaping stood that guy would have remained there and the apostles would have gone the power of god hovering around how about god genesis chapter one the bible says there was darkness from the hebrew word tohu wabohu darkness confusion and then the bible says the spirit of god the very force that is responsible for results and creation was hovering around but no change happened until god said and god acted he engaged and said let there be light be light appear reappear and then there was that and he said it and he saw it believers are largely not in ignorance so while we seek to open the body of christ to greater frontiers of revelation i am very concerned about our engaging the ones we know already because the truth of the matter is that if we commit ourselves diligently our life should begin to command certain levels of notable results you see the bible talks about a certain group of people it says they are ever learning is god blessing us already ever learning meaning that they have an appetite and that's supposed to be a good thing an appetite to explore let's go deeper wonderful let's go higher wonderful but the question is what do you do with all the conferences and conventions and meetings and sunday services wednesday prayer meetings many believers
believers receive prophecies, they receive words, they study the Bible, they read books, they have volumes and volumes of jottings, access, but they do not engage. And so at the end of it, they are disappointed, they are angry at themselves and at God. And they are almost tempted to say, Lord, your word did not work. And God says, no, 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 let's be fair. Show me what you did. From January till now, how many times did you tithe? Say, Lord, let's not talk about that one. Just did you bless me or not? And God says, look at it. Lord, you didn't heal me from the pain. And God said, did you do what was told to do? The day an instruction was given to celebrate and praise. When the Bible says rejoice in the Lord, how many times did you commit yourself to obeying it? Rejoicing not just as what you want to do, but as a key to your breakthrough. Are we together? Engaging the word. Let me tell you something. The Bible says the kingdom of God, that you have to become like a child. Do you know why? Um... In our civilized 21st century society where we are so right conscious, we don't want anybody violating on anything. I, I, you know, don't violate me. I'm a citizen. I'm intelligent. I went to school. We are so right conscious. It's very difficult for us to submit ourselves to the simplicity of the truth of God's word. Are we together now? The word of God declares this is what must be done to receive this outcome. We argue we explain intellectually. We bring all kinds of even spiritual and theological dissertations to explain away the simplicity. And God says, well, I'm not the one in need. You are the one who is looking for the solution. Look how difficult we make it to get the anointing. Look how difficult we make it to be prosperous. Look how difficult we make it to rise. Look how difficult we make it to get the power of God. Let me tell you the truth. The difficulty is that I think sometimes we preachers do not show people where to engage the word. We dispense the word. But at the end of it, we do not leave our sermons with the action point. The very point. And that's where members don't like. That's why we like prophecies a lot. Because it's an extension of our desire to refuse to act upon the word most members hate it when you commit to them and say okay i have shown you this is now how you engage and they say no no can't you what is prophesy this thing and let me move forward i don't know how many people i counsel and i tell them oh apostle this is what is going on this is this and that and i tell them okay uh, go to the media stand pick one or two messages listen to it and come back I see how they turn and greet somebody and just move around. And highest, they check around and see um, if there is an opportunity for a joke. And they, you know, believers were spiritually lazy. Not because we don't fast and we don't pray. But that point of engaging the word. One of the greatest blessings of the life and the ministry of Bishop David Oyedeko in my life is that among other things his nature of dispensing the word is such that he shows you what to do good master the rich man said what must i do to be saved he wasn't saying can i save myself lord i know that it is within your character to partner with men where is my own part of the deal we hate this talk and you know the Western world, may God bless them, we have received so much from them, but I think that this, this error of allowing God to do everything to show his sovereign, claiming that any, whether we add anything to it or not, it cannot be done. No, brothers and sisters, listen. The Bible says the heavens, even the heaven of heavens is the Lord. It says, but the earth has he given to the sons of men. There will always be a cooperation, a partnership between God and men for anything serious to happen god is still sovereign but he has chosen to limit himself so that men can also be reflectors of his glory please learn this if anything is to change in your life it is not all up to god there is a part where you have access to light and then engage that light access to it and you engage it not access alone we have done pretty well in understanding it so as I dispense these truths by the grace of God, 
alongside all the men and women of God scattered in this nation and around the world, please, I'd like us to make a commitment that we'll not only be hearers, we'll not only be receivers in terms of just hearing it into our ears, but that we will always search for the areas that will require our own partnership. Your partnership with the word of God does not negate what God has done. Your partnership with the word of God is what makes it your experience. Until you partner with the word of God, it remains a prophecy or a promise. It is your engaging the word that converts every promise to your testimony, to your experience. Right from the foundations of the earth, the lamb has been slain. But the day you hand over your life to Jesus, that's the day salvation becomes your experience. Is that true? The Bible says by his stripes we are healed. But the day you hear the word, you receive it and engage appropriately. The Bible says again and again that the Lord gives men power to prosper. But this is not our experience for many of us in the body of Christ. The day we are willing to not only receive the precept, but sustain the grace. You see, this is, th this is the true idea of grace. I told you grace is like love. Grace has, love has depth, height. That's how grace is. There is a dimension of God's grace that is his unmerited favor or unmerited access that means god kept that dimension exclusive to himself because there is absolutely nothing any man can do for instance the grace that saves men are we together now there is nothing a man can do by his own strength to save himself you can only partner but there is a dimension of grace that is an empowerment to do you will do the doing it's just that the energy is not yours now, this is the dimension of the grace of God that the body of Christ has not understood. So he empowers you with a capacity that is more than what you ordinarily would do. Then he will grant you grace. So he supplies that grace. Are we together now? Yes. If I prophesy to Pastor Alpha now, I am operating, I am doing the speaking. It is willing. He's not opening my mouth. I'm opening my mouth by myself. But I am communicating an intelligence that is not given to mere men. That intelligence, you call it the gift of the spirit. You call it the prophetic. It's what the Bible calls grace. The power to do. The power to do. Bless you, sir. Are we together? If we begin to pay attention to engaging the things we already know, Brothers and sisters, I submit to you that our lives will be a thousand times better than it is in every wise. The problem, truly speaking, is not ignorance. I told you again and again and I'll continue to say it. I do not believe the body of Christ as a corporate entity is in ignorance. There are still greater lands to conquer in the spirit. There are still deeper dimensions that God will open us but you see, the system of God is he studies what you have done with what he has given you first. And that qualifies you to receive more. The parable of the five, two, and one talent. The Bible says that when he granted unto them stewardship, the one with five talents engaged. Correct? The one with two talents engaged. The one with one talent just buried it and left it there. When the master came for accountability, he said, well, um, you were a hard man. You like reaping where you don't sow. So I, I just thought instead of wasting my time, I kept it on the ground. I can go and remove your thing, collect your thing. The Bible says they collected it from that man and gave it to the one with five talents. So you see, increase is a product of doing something with the grace and the dimension God has given you. A pastor who will not pastor two members or ten members with all his heart and bless them and sits down pasting pictures of a million members is joking and dreaming a man of god who will not engage diligently god gives you ten thousand naira you mismanage it carelessly you do not find out the principles of god there's nothing in it for god there is no system of accountability and wise use of it you can't sit down and be mesmerizing on one million ten million god does not work like that are we together how about anointings 
they are men of god who admire their whole assignment is more power and god says calm down the grace i've given you is enough to save souls even if it can't heal sick bodies now show how you have engaged that grace enough to be able to open you up to other access and say lord what is salvation anybody can do it then god grants you the grace for intercession and he said lord that one is too hard i need power direct raw power to just prophesy or lay hands and god says no you'll never work that way never work that way god is revealing to us as simple as what i'm sharing is god is showing us the reason why the issues of our lives don't change it's not because the word of god has failed it is because we seldom engage the word we complain we receive the word let me tell you what most of us do you know when when people complain about certain areas i ask them have you listened to this my teaching before i finish they smile and the person is not getting the result and he will listen now he say ah, have you listened to um 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 evidence of genuine intimacy they help you finish it and you look at this guy and you know that this guy doesn't know god for sure are we together now yes then you tell him go and listen to it and he plays around while he's just listening distracted doing a lot of things gisting with friends and then catching up and then he tells you sir i just finished there are there are certain teachings one hour teaching but i finished them in three days one hour teaching in three days because every five five minutes i'm stopping jesus something just entered my spirit i see i was studying something there and i almost jumped i almost jumped from my bed i said yeah yeah what is this he said i've not read this bible before i had to look at it again i found my biro drilled the thing again i don't know what i caught years ago that made me draw it but that ink was already fading i drew a fresh one to remind me that this is a fresh revelation what this is the bible opened up another light for me you finish a three hours message you never pause <laughs> to listen to learn even when something is very powerful you are just saying, wow just continue even the way you study in school brothers and sisters that's not how you do well you pause the psalmist will say sila pause ponder think write if need be pray if need be hallelujah if you don't like what i'm saying forget about results god is not a herbalist hallelujah yes. look at the aspects of your life you will see that there are certain areas you are in total ignorance but you will see that there are certain areas you already have the requisite knowledge truthfully speaking you already know what to do and the grace has been supplied but that spiritual nature, that laziness to comply accordingly and stay until results manifest that's what causes a lot of trouble what do you have in your house nothing except a cruise of oil and the prophet said that's it madam this is what i want you to do go why didn't the prophet prophesy vessels find your way to this poor woman's house say madam carry the energy you have left and go and borrow vessels he said borrow not a few when she came she met him and said sir i've done as you have said he said now you qualify for the next instruction close your door she would never receive the next instruction if she did not obey the last one is god speaking to us yeah and he said close the door when you close the door start engaging the oil the oil has capacity to give you any kind of miracle but when engaged and the bible says she kept pouring and the oil kept multiplying how about the widow in zarephath when the prophet came he said woman how are you fine sir water please ah i don't have much but i'm a generous woman and just bake the remaining bread for me he said we're about to eat with my son to die he said madam I'm, I'm here not because I'm hungry. I'm here so that you will survive. So just handle this treasure is in eating vessels. You better quickly come and feed me first. The woman would have said, you are such a heartless and stupid man. You are the prophet they've been talking about. You are a wicked man. I will make sure I tell all those who have, you are, ah, ah. 
you see me and a child you don't even love women and start another funny women movement and say look there are prophets who don't they collect things from women and the bible says that she had engaging that thing all of a sudden she turned and discovered that the flower i'm showing you how this works how about three days they spent three days on the mountain and then the people said these guys are hungry there will be commotion here now and jesus said feed them said, ah, feed them even a year's worth of food no miracle could happen until there there was something from men and andrew found a young boy and carried his bread his, his lunch box as they call it and all of a sudden jesus lifted it and gave thanks and there was multiplication who taught you that things happen by themselves it is the dynamics of the workings in terms of god's part that is none of your business the bible says just as you do not know the way bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child not the way of the wind that's how you cannot tell the work of god there is a part of this equation that you can never know it is sponsored by the wisdom of god for instance how your destiny helper will come is not your business your own is to engage what brings them your destiny helper can be a donkey a donkey needs to be missing for you to find samuel doesn't matter you think if god asks Saul to choose how he will receive the anointing will he choose the the disappearance of a donkey leave the acting to god your own is obey to the latter and then you will watch god use anything to act that drama until you receive the anointing let me tell you where spiritual fatigue comes when we want to know how the details how will i pay my rent lord i know you are faithful but let's let's be honest here and god is saying me you are telling me to be honest <laughs> do you believe what i'm saying yes so we don't engage the word at all at all master if it be thou bid me come and jesus said really you want to see a new dimension i've given you a word engage it come all of them stood and said oh yeah he didn't say peter come he just said come whoever walked he said come and all of a sudden peter got up and walked and it was it it was surprising peter i'm walking and he was laughing and all of a sudden he was about sinking many people see the sinking part they don't see the part that jesus stopped him from sinking because he had to be responsible over his word Peter's mistake at the point of obedience had to be addressed by Jesus himself. If Peter sank, Jesus would be to blame. After all, Jesus knew he was learning. He said, come. Obey him and perish. And watch whether you will perish. Listen, learn this. I'm teaching you how faith works. Peter. He held him and said, no. If you walked on your own like jonah jonah was not helped because he was in disobedience so the whale swallowed him what bailed jonah out was mercy are we together these are the systems of the kingdom this is how it works guys go and preach in my name heal the sick cast out devils and jesus ah, jesus won't you go with us say no 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 just go i've given you my name say where is it say just believe keep going and when they met the first sick person um my name is sir you saw me with that other guy he really sent us i'm not really sure about this i've not mastered it but i hope you are not offended if i prayed for you and peter laid hands on someone and all of a sudden to his shock Peter said, this thing is working. Let's do it again. They returned back to Jesus and said, Hi! Jesus, even the devils that we fear so much were subject to us in thy name. And Jesus said, that those are little issues. Let's talk about it. Don't rejoice because of that. Be honest with yourself tonight. Is it really that God has not been faithful? 
or you have not engaged the word you have been told that prayer and fasting are keys for true revival and spiritual power be honest with yourself have you engaged it with understanding don't sit down and say god is not anointing me what do you think the anointing is not a charm You eat anything, anywhere, anyhow, anytime. No, sir. No, sir. How about breakthrough? There are many of us that want breakthrough. You hear people, the fact that God is doing it to one person. That per you see, do you know why we allow testimonies? The most important part of testimonies is not the result. It's the bridge between the problem and the solution. What did the person do? That's what your spirit should be sensitive about. For many of us, we wait till the end of it. Then we say, wow, you mean it? This is how I live my life. I don't sit down and tell God, Lord, create the changes. I say, no, Lord, I know. I give you all the praise. Show me my own part. And I stand up and start engaging it. Start engaging it. Start engaging it. What of our family members? Oh, God will you keep watching us like this and god says no listen to joshua selman oh god i don't have the time i'm like i was saying will you keep changing our lives and god says you are violating an ordinance it's not going to change husband is standing wife is standing children are standing devil is destroying that family and wrecking their lives they are arguing with one another and not interested in change God says, listen, when it comes to this thing, you can't help yourself. It is by a prophet that the Lord brought them out of Egypt. And by a prophet, they were preserved. Even if you are a midwife, when you are about to give birth, you need another midwife to help you. That you are a midwife does not mean you can deliver yourself. Listen to this and understand. There are systems in the kingdom. A time comes when your personal anointing cannot give you the breakthrough you are looking for. Hmm. is god helping us so so many people arrogantly sit down and say what is there is it not man of god man is it not the same jesus that died for us and they sit down there and their problems continue to compound and multiply whereas there is enough grace to trivialize that problem and reduce 10 years of problems in a moment how long Please help me. How long? Listen, I think it was in it was in Mina over the weekend. We were preaching for um, Bishop. It was it was such a, an awesome time with him and uh, Bishop Achaya. And I was sharing there. I said every anointing. Listen to me. Every challenge has the level of anointing that can address it. That you are anointed is not generic in results. The anointing is levels. When your challenges are higher than your level of anointing or the level of anointing close to you, you're already in trouble. There are three ways to come out of that thing. Grow in the anointing to a level where it can surmount it or trust God for access to personalities whose price in the spirit has granted them access to the level of grace that can throw away that problem. Brothers and sisters, in my little life, I've had the privilege of seeing what the anointing of the spirit how it can rubbish a situation that is within the level the jurisdiction of that anointing to solve it almost in a moment in a twinkling of an eye and that challenge is gone but i've also seen how frustrated an anointed man can be in the face of a challenge that is higher than your level of anointing it will rubbish you as if you have never met god believe what i'm teaching you if the mysteries of the kingdom are not engaged this family now will get up and say okay we have read in the bible and let me tell you what happens they begin to pray at least it's a starting point while they pray the holy ghost will take the mother or the father to a scripture and said study the life of saul of kish do everything they did and so they start studying a donkey was missing we for us an animal was not missing let me show you how the, the holy spirit helps people what is missing joy peace love breakthrough finances spiritual upliftment what did they do 
they started moving around and a servant said let's go and meet a man of god and the holy spirit says go and do likewise and they stand up and the holy spirit now tells them look there's a miracle service coming you see the word of god is becoming alive you are acting you can sit down at home and say god has brought it he said we should go for the miracle service and then give all kinds of flames you excuses it is raining i'm not very happy i didn't eat well we were not joyful yesterday those things are the ways demon spirits keep people but when you stand up as you are walking to come heaven is recording your obedience and already scheduling the system for your miracle now while you are coming you are not even sure you will meet me but you are coming anyway while you are coming you are not even sure you will have space but you are coming anyway are you seeing how this thing works you come anyway and you sit down and to your greatest shock it was never for you to meet me while the praise and worship is on fire lands on your situation and all of a sudden you see someone calling you repeated calls and you have to avoid it after Konya or whatever program you just go and check and someone is calling you and saying sir remember we were supposed to strike a deal and it didn't work I, my spirit was moving me and you say god this is you let me show you how breakthrough happens breakthrough is worked is like the working of miracles you know how you cook food you don't drop onions pepper fish whatever it is you drop on the table and just shout and say food cook no you work it how do you work it you get a pot firewood or whatever you are using you start engaging sometimes it will be painful as you are cutting something knife can cut you but you are more interested in the food than that temporary pain it's by eating the food the pain will be healed so continue and at the end of it you have a lovely meal and everybody who comes around wonders brothers and sisters it is true that god gave grace but you worked it are we together this part of engaging the word is what i want i want to drum it into our spirits nothing will change in your life just because you are a christian the word of god must be engaged hallelujah mm. sacrifices praise several things you must engage the word of god there are some of us here you have never sown a seed I'm not saying to me, please don't get what I'm saying. But you have never, most of us is 95% receiving, 5% giving. You will be broke forever. That's the equation of poor people. Are we together? Yes. Give me, your own is to collect. Lord, who is going to give me? And the Lord says, when are you going to create your own harvest? Have you not heard that if the cloud be full of rain, if you use a spoon to, spend, to send vapor to the air, you will spend your whole life. There are other people who don't allow challenges to last. They walk it till it gives up. They walk it till it gives up. I believe in results. I am motivated by results. I'm very, very outspoken about results. I'm not one of those people who lie to you and say it doesn't matter. It matters, sir. Results matter. Human beings were designed to remain motivated when what you engage produces is that true yes when a woman gets pregnant we're happy for her pregnancy and we can endure everything that the pregnancy carries provided there will be a child at the end is that true yes when somebody like the people sharing now the lady that was sharing about the rigor that she went through you know now the most important thing is that finally the result is cleared and all of that when you do things the pain is when you put so much energy and time and then it does not yield results this is what i want to cancel from our life hallelujah breakthroughs are predictable hmm. the help of god is predictable the mercy of god is predictable results are predictable please my brother my sister let me beg us in the name of jesus to not sit down and hope things change i'm delivering you from it 
Because after 10 years, it will remain like that until it changes. There are people who, as of January this year, wrote down a list of certain things. They submitted it and asked questions. Lord, how do I engage with you? And right now, God has ticked those things with results. There are others, all they do, every miracle service is, God arise for me, they drop it. Every instruction God gave from January till now, they have not done one. Lift up your hands, they won't lift up. Pray, they won't pray. Celebrate God, dance around you know, all these things. How can I be a, a child? We left these things. Am I in a party? You see that? I told you about dancing. I don't like dancing, it's not anything I admire at all. But it's a it's a key. You know how drugs are, how you swallow drugs. Sometimes when you swallow drugs, especially maybe a syrup, it can be so bitter. Especially when you are giving children. They are trying to deny, but your love keeps them there. Swallow it. When they swallow it, you pamper them later on. Swallow it. Do you pity the child? Say, oh, yeah, I'll leave you like that. No. That's how it is. When you are obeying God, don't pity yourself. Oh. No, sir. Don't pity yourself. Abraham carried Isaac and said, up we go. When he kept looking at Isaac, Isaac, I love you, but this one. See, be careful some of us get too emotionally connected to every area of our lives that is difficult for us to get to the next level you are emotionally connected to your money you are emotionally connected to your title you are emotionally connected to whatever that's why it is difficult for us to give up things to go high you are emotionally connected to your ministry my ministry The word of God works. It is reliable. This is how God has helped us by his mercy to be where we are today. And this is how he will help us to rise. But the key is that we engage the word. The key is that we engage the word. We don't sit down and make God responsible for everything and laugh around and fool ourselves. That's not faith. No, that's not faith. You must take inventory of your life. You'll be surprised to know that this is not even my message this night. I just came and this thing started boiling in my spirit. God is my witness whom I serve that I am passionate about seeing every one of us produce results. See, let me tell you, if you are a man of God and you are the only one rising, you are, you are a big failure doesn't matter what you whether it's car house no i rather fail as a person and you succeed your success will turn me into a success you see that let me be honest with you in all sincerity some of the things i teach you god has helped me in those areas so it's not like i'm teaching with any interest for myself I'm hearing a song in my spirit. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us. Hallelujah. Lord, I want to become a public speaker. You dropped it here. You have not engaged the word. You found a scripture, but you have not done anything with it. Lord, I want to become a man of God. And the only thing you are thinking about is starting a church. You know, sometimes sometimes the way the way we pastors behave is why we keep struggling forever brothers and sisters if you have eight days to cut a tree use seven days sharpening the knife use seven solid days stand in the sun and sharpen the knife i promise you you will hit that tree once and it will fall 
but you can carry a blunt knife axe and even if they give you 90 days the tree will not fall hallelujah don't jump into things take out quality time to engage this thing engage this thing god is calling let me use you promise come god is calling promise into ministry for instance go and start a ministry in delta or start a ministry in u.s and then the only thing he does is just says wow i i have learned enough you just jump and go to delta and after five years you are still roaming around as if god didn't call you in that five years those who engage the world are swimming in grace whereas you are there frustrating the grace of god after 10 years you now leave it and say you want to go and join military or police they say your age has passed you now say you want to join something else and your life and you blame god and god says no you refuse to engage the world i told you time never changes anything it only reveals time reveals whether you have been engaging properly or you have been wasting your time but god calls this guy now and he sits down lord what kind of ministry are you giving me Oh, this is this and he's studying he's learning he's building how do we do church finances in a way that you don't play pranks on people he's learning how do we build membership when members cross 500 how do you manage them you are learning how do I grow in the anointing when I have three to five sermons to preach every week how do I manage it with my family life what if I have a business running how do I manage it this gentleman works on himself I tell you he gets up and in one year start a ministry and all the forces that should be there are there everything done whereas another person is struggling and angry now this is anger is usually a product of frustration when you try to do things and you are angry and someone comes and it becomes effortless you see one of the proof of mastery is how effortless you are when you when you execute your plans effortlessly how are you doing it and people begin to coin explanations I don't want to live a life of a failure I don't want to number one it does not glorify God number two is going to waste my time number three there are many people connected to me in the spirit and my failure is going to affect them and destroy them and tear their lives into pieces one of my greatest fears if I have any is to walk and to walk with God for a long time and then to find that the things are believed I lie that's why I'm meticulous about the construction of my beliefs Lord what I believe about finances is it accurate what I believe about the anointing is it accurate what I believe about fasting and prayer is it accurate I'm not ashamed though if at any point I find out there is a problem I'm not ashamed I, okay Lord let's look at this this is what I used to believe but now I'm seeing I'm learning this Wow amazing I'm growing and you are just let me tell you something there are many anointings to lift our family members but it is at the mercy of their engaging they only complain and insult they insult every anointing that can bring them breakthrough and they sit down and hope and wish they will learn you will be surprised and i don't mean to be sarcastic you'll be surprised to know how many people live within this vicinity who have never received of what god is doing it will be shocking and surprising are you hearing what i'm saying now the trouble is you are the one who is the patient who cries the patient or the hospital please talk to me when the patient insults the hospital does the hospital have tears the hospital will, will be busy treating those who are ready is that true lord i don't want to live my life as a failure results can be commanded this thing has been done before 
I'm not asking you where you grew up, whether it's in your village or whatever. I'm not asking what has happened in your life. Brothers and sisters, this anointing we talk about is God's own ability. But are we willing to engage it to produce the required result? Do it honorably and fail. And the Lord will do for you what he did for Peter. He held his hand and lifted him. This is how God brought some of us, my brother, my sister. It's not as if anybody signed and gave any guarantee and said, start ministry if you need money, we'll support you. Start ministry if you need members. No, 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 no. Engaging by faith. When people see the results, they trivialize it. Sometimes people just talk all kinds of things, but then they do not know that these things were engaged. Access is not enough the word the truth the mystery the principle the revelation must be engaged it must be engaged it must be engaged there is a part you have to play play it and watch god watch god arise for you as a mighty god and turn things around for you hallelujah do you believe what i'm sharing with you this thing does not take time it just takes commitment if i'm building a house listen and i have workers building a house for me and they are working they start working by six and by night there are those who do night shift and are working is that true and there is another lazy builder the workers come by 10 they close by two whose house will be built first you see that now the amount of commitment you give to this thing determines the result it will deliver to you. There is no way around it. I watch our fathers of faith and I'm surprised that with the kind of results they command, you still see them engaging this thing. They are working it with all their heart. I was watching... A video by Dr. Paul Enenche, and um, I'm saying this only because he said it. He was preaching this year at um, Bill Winston's ministry, and the Lord's Garden, the magnificent structure that they are building around the airport road in Abuja. And he said, just for the the zinc alone, just to cover that place, they are spending 16 million US dollars zinc not building 16 million us dollars in a time of recession debt free now only a fool and a stupid person 16 million dollars will more than answer the request of many ministries times 10 and this is what is used for zincing so a wise person says this is the result i'm looking for it is on earth already happening in someone's life so what do you do you follow them who through faith and patience, what did he engage? Because he was not born like that. As at 1999, God's servant, Dr. Paul Enenche was in one room in Abuja. There were people who were in the houses, they are still there today. Because they didn't engage anything. As at 99, he was there with his wife in one room. And all of a sudden, rises to do something. There are people still there today. Brothers and sisters, if your life must change, it's not up to God alone. God's power is available. I have indoctrinated myself into being a responsible believer that nothing will ever change just like that. Hallelujah. What are you doing in partnership with the word of God? Do you understand the principle and the mystery that connects your challenge or your desire and the outcome? Do you understand? Then if yes, are you engaging completely? The future will show the mysteries and the things that Koinonia is engaging. It's, it's, not, it's not something to blow trumpet and talk about now. But the future will tell what is being engaged today. You see that? Something I do not know is responsible for where I am.
something I know but have not believed is also responsible for where I am. Something I have believed but have not acted upon consistently is responsible for where I am. While you are seated, can you pray, cry to God and say, Lord, I repent. I've been handing over the responsibility of my results entirely to you. But now I have heard you. I have seen it very clearly that nothing will change by itself. Are you praying? Some of you are looking at others. Forget about them and cry for your destiny. Apostle, I graduated since five years ago. Nothing has happened in my life. Show me what you are engaging first. Let me see what you have done. I thought I would have a job. Who told you you will have a job? Just like that? Show me the mystery you engage and the mystery you are engaging. Keep praying. Show me what you are engaging. Apostle, I expected that by now I should not be begging for food to feed my family. Show me what you are engaging. Or are you just waiting for things to happen? Show me. Apostle, I expected by now that my ministry should be strong enough financially. Show me what you are engaging. Let me see it. Apostle, I expected that by now I should be flowing at certain levels of the prophetic, certain levels of the anointing. Show me what you are engaging sir i expect that i should be established by now i should have had a car and a house show me what you are engaging don't just wish for nothing i've been coming to church that's not enough what have you engaged pray nothing will ever change my brother my sister access to truth is not enough it must be engaged though access to truth is not enough apostle i've listened to all your messages on favor wonderful have you done what was said in the message consistently have you done what was said in the message having the readiness to judge every disobedience if and only when your obedience is complete let's not turn god to a game player playing pranks and 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 expect strange results pray you don't commit 30 minutes to god 30 minutes of your life the remaining part of your life and you want to carry fire which god are we talking about here prayer zero word life zero passion and hunger for spiritual things zero and you want to carry the anointing no sir no sir no sir no sir show me the time you commit to study show me the time you commit to sacrificing your sleep show me how you engage with the world show me the videos you watch show me the retreats the times alone that you spend with god and i can tell you why your result is the way it is it's not magic it's not magic it's not magic hallelujah listen to me you know let me say this honestly there are many men of god who see ministries that god has blessed with crowds like this and they do not know the enormous responsibility of pastoring thousands of people they think all about standing here sometimes you see me stand here let me confess and tell you truly most of the time i stand here most times i'm waiting on god is when i go back that i eat something there are times that the water you see me take here is the first thing that is entering my stomach as i stand i'm not saying that's what you must do after service you see me stand here to see people sometimes past 12 last week i went home to one don't want crowd if you cannot engage what is going to be there are we together now yes, we want things without the responsibility attached to it you before you barely rest someone has woken you there is a challenge 
you, when I came, you saw me talking on phone and I called the protocol because they needed to respond to an emergency somewhere. The people don't care that there is service. Listen, let me tell you, for every dimension, there is a price. I, I wish, I don't know how to make you believe this thing. If you are unwilling to pay the price, please forget about the dimension. There are levels of anointing that when it comes to your life, the moment certain things are not done, it will destroy you. It's better for it to have not come. Believe what I'm telling you. Jonah, Jonah, Jonah entered a boat and people, they started losing things. And when they were checking, they said, what is making this boat heavy? Jonah said, I'm the one who, if I were not anointed, I would have slept quietly. But because of what I carried, you are suffering for something now. There are levels to not pray for when you are not ready for certain sacrifices. Oh God, open my eyes. Are you ready to pray for everything you see? Because you will see things that will disturb you. You are about to rest and you see a plane crash. You are about to rest and you see a car crashing somebody. And if it happens that way, God will call you and say, if your eyes were closed, you are free. But hence you cried and said, open my eyes. It's not about prophesying, you no. Know, there is a responsibility. Oh God, make me rich. Let me be your distributor. And God stands and says, as you are leaving your house now, carry 50,000. My people are in need of it. Yes, sir. Ah, oh God, you said you want to be my steward. Oh yeah, carry it. And somebody comes and while you are talking, he says, give 5,000 to Sam. There are two little children. Give all of them one 1,000. And you are acting like a fool. And God says, that's how my distribution system works. The day you are not interested, I close the heavens. As simple as that. I see a lot of greedy people admiring blessed people and think that there are people for over two months. Your offering is 10 naira. Or one year, 10 years. You drink is five for life. How much is five for life? And then you squeeze as an adult, working class. You come to church with 10, 20 naira and drop it. And say, but what are these young people doing? Are you joking? Brothers and sisters, let me submit to you. If you ever try to sow seeds like me, it may kill you in one month. I'm telling you this sincerely. Lord, make me a millionaire. He says, are you ready to sponsor 70 children? He said, no, no, I don't want that. Oh God, you gave me only two. He says, that's it. Whoever wants it my way must be ready to do my bidding. Hallelujah, time the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, time the glory. Revive us. Is God speaking to us tonight? Stop claiming things blindly when there is no sincerity. Oh God, give me a Give me an international anointing. Okay? Do you have the grace to counsel, to preach three, five times a week? Can you be sleeping on the road? Can you be sleeping in the air? That becomes your new bedroom. Can you sacrifice that much? It's not all about putting water and clapping. It's a sacrifice. Let me tell you this. And I stand before the God of heaven. Thank God he's here. You are spiritual people. Less than 15% of my prayers is for myself. God is my witness. Less than 15% for myself. Father, bless your people. Change their story. A text message comes. Sometimes you don't see me reply your text message. It doesn't mean I don't pray over it. Do you have the sacrifice? Can people come to your house and you carry your last meal and give them everything and then they don't tell you thank you and God said it's none of your business leave the issue is between me and you please listen to me oh these are the engagings it's not just about honor it's not just about sitting I'm ready to be a man of God are you ready for the criticism everything about your life is an open book Everybody criticizes everything. 
can you sit down hearing people criticize you and still sleep sound and get up in the morning some of you who are so sensitive i think you stole my phone how can i be the thief and you are moving around and you want to do ministry you must be broken and you must be worked on by god is god speaking to us this teaching is very sincere most of us see blessed people and just admire them and i look at the greed that is in many people's lives greed you can sit down somebody is saying i've not eaten there is one thousand naira in your pocket you say go and meet apostle go and meet apostle he, 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 he likes giving just talk to him and he will give you and this is the person holding one thousand naira and you are saying oh god when will you visit me? and god even scholarship you will not see for where are we together this is how this thing works so send 200 naira recharge card to your mother you rejected it whereas somebody transferred 1000 to you and god says take 200 say how, how many and it's not like there is an important discussion and god says i'm watching your heart you are not engaging this thing let me show us why we are really not getting results let's be honest with ourselves am i engaging the word Cain got angry because of Abel's results and God said no no this is not about Abel if you do what Abel did to the latter will you not get his result hear me it doesn't cost God to raise help for you there is something we are not doing that is keeping the heavens closed there is something a man of God is not doing that's why his ministry is not growing there is something a father a mother a brother a sister is not doing that's why we are perpetually in lack and suffering and penury every guy that comes to me lives in two weeks five guys have come sister calm down could there be that there's something you are no 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 there's nothing wrong with me yeah i just happen to have bad luck with stupid guys five of them stupid that means something in you is attracting them because you draw your kind to yourself the body of christ likes passing blames we blame witches we blame pastors we blame government we blame our parents let me tell you your miracle starts the day you get a chair or go behind one tree and sit down. i'm surprised seeing many gentlemen their lives are not moving they are not doing anything after koinonia you're just looking at any sister who can i now marry you this one that time is going and there's nothing happening you see what we're saying A gentleman who will go and sit down with a biro and your bible and a tape recorder lord it can't be this way the word of god is coming every day why is my life like this i am 31 i am 35 i am 40 i'm seated i can i have to beg for gary lord i love you something is wrong and all of a sudden you come there your friend is calling say leave me alone no, you better leave me alone say is this your did you renew your dstv say don't near my house you have been deceiving me for many years and you sit down and all of a sudden the word of the lord comes this sitting down is what we don't do we stand up moving around this hustling life pillar to post one thing is needful sit down first stand up as instructed don't move around just like that he, he, see the labor of the fool the engaging of a fool weary at every one of them because he doesn't know the road to the city not every action is profitable it is the action that is done in obedience and through understanding apostle i'm anointed i'm surprised i organize a meeting and nobody comes there is something you need to know more about the anointing it's more than laying hands apostle people come to my church they receive miracles and go back that means there is something you need to know about leadership you have done well knowing about miracles but there is something you do not know about leadership please blast in tongues for one minute 
and say lord i'm tired of this level i'm tired of this level i'm tired of this level i'm tired of this dimension i'm tired of this face lift your voice and pray lord i know you are ever faithful pray i take responsibility tonight there is something i am not engaging adequately Hallelujah. Please sit down. The Lord has brought before us several keys, mysteries, secrets that are responsible for certain outcomes. Brothers and sisters, it's up to us. There are lazy people waiting for others to enjoy, to engage it, then they enjoy the benefit. You cannot sit down and be dependent forever. Our little children should be the ones waiting. But an adult, oh, you know that thing they say in Hausa, Ale Baka Musamu. So while you are engaging, I'm resting. After all, you'll be too kind to leave me like that. Nah. The Bible says, right from the days of John the Baptist, even until now, the kingdom suffered violence. And the violent would take it by force. Someone who will say, No way, Lord, I will force what is my portion from the realm of the spirit life does not deliver anything to careless less as fair if it happens it happens no everybody who receives anything worthwhile are those who stand in life and force their own force it down this passive i'm no one day things will happen we are not angry enough that's why we have not broken the back of certain things in our life We are learning. I've shared with you. There are some of us, the reason why we are not getting results in our lives is because we ignore God. I've shared these principles. You don't ignore God and prosper, sir. Okay, um, I'm a businessman. Me, I'm not into ministry. Ignore God and see. Ignore God and watch the devil rubbish your life. Many business people don't honor God. They honor business, they honor men, but they don't honor God. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. How many people start walking and they, they don't have time for God? Time for the house of God? No. Time for the things of God? I'm a bit busy. Lord, you know that I'm, I'm engaged. And God says, hey, you are engaged. And then the devil comes to rubbish your life and your work. One sickness arises and just destroys you. Somebody in your office looks at you and says, let me see how you will rise to the next level. And that's, it is they that know their God that shall be strong and do exploits. To, the fierceness in today's world does not require guessing about God. You must know God. Hallelujah. I've said it humorously. Only God can tell the number of charms and shrines and herbal places that have my names on their altars. Only God knows the people who project me as I sleep to make sure I don't wake up. This man you see is here for a long time. Very long time. Is that true? Some of us have refused. We have been drumming mental development. And we have refused. So we are mediocre where we are. It's amazing how when the word of God comes, people exempt themselves. 
say this part is not for me this is the part for me no all scripture was inspired how many all scripture god can be talking about mental development and you can say me for me i'm a man of prayer and fasting leave that one for um, um, mental development all those who want to become professors and lecturers for me this is a vineyard and you are there and you find out that because your mindset is thinking wrong regardless of your results L listen being around the truth and not engaging it can destroy you because it will bring about familiarity you are familiar with every man of god every program everything yet it will not bless you those that were close to jesus ran away they were not getting anything nicodemus came and met him once in the night and received something that changed his life mental development mental development upgrading your mind expanding your capacity to be relevant in today's world and grants you the opportunity to glorify christ how about people who do not understand authority this is the mystery they have not engaged and that's why the devil whips them left right and center left right and center they have no honor no regard for anybody on earth some of our parents are like that like that just say, hey, so so man has come to town which man so why are people going to go and see him what's the spell you see you see and, and they start debating it and the person debating is poor and broke and sick and suffering he does not know that it is for this cause many are weak many are sick and many do sleep he sits down there and a miracle is close to him sometimes in his neighborhood and he hears reinhard bonke preaching and laughs he said ah is that the wise man you are talking about what is this one he says they said baba is about to pray for the city well, no, no, mind those people and his kind of case is what is being called and they are being healed and reinhard bonke will go back and the proud man who does not understand authority sits down there look the way we have cheated ourselves because of ignorance of the systems of god cheap victories that have been complicated through ignorance look at students here you heard the testimony of one of our ladies last week no school fees no nothing and the result comes out and you are graduated <laughs> There are some of us where our lives are the way it is because there is no excellence to anything we do we are born again but everything is mediocre everything everything average mediocre local champions i'm a tailor like who well i'm, I'm here i'm patching here and there i lord i need increase and god says increase your capacity be excellent be excellent so that you can now start making clothes when you make a millionaire's clothes you get a millionaire's reward when you make clothes for somebody who gives you 500 today 200 tomorrow 800 today to pay 3000 and you are arguing as if arguing and arguing and fight and forgive the person but you still suffer you get tired and say lord i've started i've left this level i've challenged us was being excellent hallelujah excellent some of us relationships this is the mystery we are not engaging we know it but we are not engaging it hallelujah relationships honorable is here um I, I don't mean to embarrass him but this man of god that you see forget that he's a politician i told you politicians are my friends i'm intentionally friends with politicians because whoever controls power controls what happens I'm not one of these, these foolish people that throw away politicians away. They are my friends. Oh. They are my friends. They are my friends. Yes. They are my friends. Hallelujah. Jezebel wanted to destroy the people in the land of Elijah. The first thing she did was to marry the king. 
to make sure she was at the seat of governance then she now pushed her up say oh yeah wait i'm the one in charge see that a true apostolic grace must be able to minister the life and the power of god even at the level of governance i went for movie crusade and honorable is here do you know brothers and sisters this man as great as he is with his status and all of this he came for the crusade with his wife stayed like two days together and returned back when i go to yola sometimes with his own car carries me in his own jeep and drives around praise the lord relationship if he calls me and says his wife is having a headache and you call me There, there were calls but let me show you how i will respond relationship that's what brought docas back to life when docas died she was a woman who while she said i can't preach but i can sew madam you are cold let me make sweater for you when she died the widow said no way these wicked men they are all preachers but they don't take care of us you better raise this woman back to life for our sake hallelujah Tomorrow, if he becomes a governor, I'm still his friend. Is that true? Yes. Access. That's why when he comes like this, we honor him. What is all this? Everybody is equal before God. It is true based on your understanding. System that we do not know that destroys us and rubbishes our lives because we do not know are we together yes relationships i told you the easiest way to rise in life is relationship everything money can pay for relationships can pay for it if you use money to pay for everything in life you are not wise there are things relationships should pay for You can't pay for the house, but a relationship can give it to you. I, I spent time um, the week before last to talk extensively on relationships. I'm not going to go back, but please listen to that message. I can spend my time talking to you about relationship. That's what happened. John the Baptist had the privilege. His mother, listen, John the Baptist did not study what happened around his birth. When Mary received the prophecy of the angel she knew it was a strange thing she had to search for another woman who had a strange experience like her to be able to relate with her and she found out she had the gist of elizabeth and how john came and when they met their babies left when john was born he was older than jesus six months of course at the wilderness there when he met jesus for a while he was walking with jesus but offense came in because some of jesus's disciples left and became his disciple and he left and then he now went trying to look for relevance he went and started lambasting herod because he did not know the protocol of the palace he thought that the palace is the same thing as the wilderness the way you speak in the wilderness is not how you speak in the palace there are principles all preachers that rubbish themselves in high places and they call it speaking for christ there is the wisdom and intelligence when paul was in the jerusalem council with the sanhedrin he spoke as a pharisee he said look 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 look. i can speak as this and that but look now there are pharisees sadducees let me bring a point of divide i'm speaking based on my authority i'm a pharisee spoke about the resurrection and that place caught fire relationships many of our parents today know too many people to be looking for house at their age is that true they didn't raise anybody they didn't lift anybody all their friends are successful people they watch television and tell you this guy was my friend do you know that uh, general buhari was my classmate do you know this one was my classmate do you know that kofi Annan we drank tea together oh god why have you not been there? what has that relationship done for you this is why when we do things in church like turn to one another and give them a nice hug and you are frowning the 
this investment you are making now of rejecting people will be waiting for you in the future you will see the person you frowned at in power and glory and now you will not have the same access again it is cheaper now than later you've heard me say we will all be great but the greater part is that we will all know ourselves that's the most important part so that what I do not have a Jimmy can give me at a platter of gold hardship because there is no relationship hardship because there is no relationship as a ministry by the grace of God God has helped us to enjoy certain privileges with people with institutions because of relationships what have you refused to engage that is punishing you and is destroying you what have you refused what do you know and have been wishing will work for you but you have not engaged it truly hallelujah it's one of the things i respect a lot about my dad my dad understands relationships in a strange way he knows almost anybody everywhere if he's a policeman he will scroll down there has to be one policeman he gave bag of rice some years before if it is prisons if it is customs if he's a carpenter even if he's a truck he does not have that stops he knows a mechanic somewhere he knows the one that fixes Peugeot he knows the one that fixes these relationships now it's costly that's a very busy life but it's only busy until the day you need those people one call and they tell someone else yes sir but another you keep knocking forever and you say god help me god i helped you since you misuse the opportunity hallelujah praise the lord what have you been paying for that relationships would have paid if you engage them how long will you continue hating people and talking about them as though you are going to live in this world alone how long are you ready to continue holding grudges when will you forbear and excel there are ladies over my dead body my mother i will never talk to her but the blessing in your destiny is in the mouth of that woman justified she did something wrong but can you ignore everything so that you step into another dimension hallelujah i am passionate about engaging the word i am passionate i studied the life of job because i want to be very prosperous and i studied his life i saw things that job did that if job died poor god would have been a wicked person i found treasures i said ah this is what job did not the obvious things we see there were things that job did what are you doing some of us these are little children they never look at you and smile they look at you and they are afraid you call them children remember you are not going to die young you have received the anointing for long life the children you laugh at today you are only 10 years older than them or 20 years or 30 years they will soon grow and become adults too and occupy positions of influence and you will see that a mistake you did 30 years ago will haunt you and your children and children's children is god giving us wisdom these are these are the systems that we, these are these are these are success systems these are success systems i'm i'm challenging us this engaging part is what came in my spirit today to talk to us about engage the word engage the word engage the mysteries you know and stay there stay there till it produces don't engage once and complain do you know there was a time in my life i did everything but there was no result everything to be done i cross checked and it was correct once you have done everything leave god's part to him so when people are complaining and say apostle what am i missing i say you are not missing anything just stay there just like that yes sir stay there 
God is watching your growth. And he knows that if those blessings come, you don't have the spiritual capacity to take it yet. So he keeps you. And then overnight, you wake up and step into a dramatic dimension of the anointing. And they say, where did he come from? He's always been there waiting. I've been sowing seeds. Continue. It says not to be weary in well-doing. For we will reap in due season. There is a due season if you fail not. If you fail, the due season will come and pass. And you will not see anything. I will never stop sowing seeds. I will sow like a madman. Until the day the harvest comes. I will never stop engaging my passion for God. I will never stop building capacity. I will respect every man of God and every authority that is producing the results that I'm not producing. Never will I open my mouth to talk about somebody who is producing results that I'm not producing. It's pride of the highest order. No matter how simple and how cheap they sound, they are engaging something that is producing my results. I have a meeting next year and God has granted me the privilege and I'll have the privilege to be meeting with I think maybe for the first time in my life one of the billionaires in the world in Nigeria I look forward to that meeting I'm preparing for it like I'm writing jam he said ah, ah, apostle for what this dishonor we carry is why we never rise if I sit down with a billionaire and he talks to me for five minutes, I will go down my knees and say, thank you, sir. Because it will change my ignorant mind for God's sake and deliver me from the things that have pegged me and my lineage at certain levels. I look forward to that meeting. I've been praying and fasting about it. I say, Lord, this meeting cannot be once. We have to be friends. We have to be what? Yes. Because a friend sticks close to, than a brother. This brother, sister, thing, friends. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know we think it doesn't matter what I just said. Look at our lives. Look at our families. Have you not seen the rules we have broken for ages? God is faithful. Our lack of understanding his system is what is punishing us. Apostle, why are you teaching all this? So you can serve God. Let my people release them from this pain so that they will go and serve me. I want, they are, for as long as they are working in the farms, for as long as they are suffering in Egypt, they can't serve me. Say, let my people go so that they will do what? It is my desire to see some of our brothers a few years from now. That when others get up in the morning and are running helter-skelter, you are there with your family. You made a way. That's the worship song playing. When our backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over You made a way And visitors come to your house discussing survival and you are discussing kingdom we have allocated 10 million to this ministry there is a mission agency we heard that these people are passionate about souls and they say are you a pastor he said no i'm just a brother in church i have been trained that my entire life is about a, the kingdom he said are you you, meet, you better stand up and make ends meet a luther continue i said no not in this house we have demarcated this house through understanding exempted forever from certain things Someone comes to your house and say, what's that noise I'm hearing? Say, we have a vigil today. Say, ah, which prophet is coming? Say, no, priesthood, our house, we have vigils. Say, are you not aware that uh, you have to rush? Say, no, 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 God is faithful. God is faithful. And you are praying. And they say, what are you praying for? Souls. Say, ah, what about, uh, what about ends to meet? Say, ah, God, God, as we settled that long ago. This is, in this house, it is kingdom. Do you think this is possible, what I'm saying? You better believe it. Otherwise, you will be another angry person. This is what I want my life to be all about. 
Let no one deceive you that your whole life should be spent looking for money, then serving God small on the way. It's a cost. Did you hear what I said? It's a cost. You can live a happy life where you sit down and teach your children by yourself because you have time. Junior, come. Daddy is about to teach you how to tithe. Have your envelope. Have your own. You put your own one million dollars. The young boy puts his own hundred dollars there. He's learning how to tithe. Daddy, what do we do with this? Son, this is called the law of open heaven. Say after me. And he murmurs whatever he says, what he's learning. By the time that child is 10, he's a millionaire by himself without your influence. And one day he says, Daddy, I was sleeping and I had a voice. And the Lord told me to donate half of my wealth to a mission agency. He says, son, do it fast. Because his father has understanding. Do it fast. Daddy, I thought I was going to become a doctor, but I had a voice in the night saying I'll be a great man of God. Don't worry, you are covered. Not this morning ceremony. Says, so you are going to the vineyard now. Who is the sponsor? No, that's, that's the mindset they carry about preachers. The moment you say you are preaching, people just look at you and they, they have a valedictory service for you into a life of pain. No, sir. Hallelujah. One day you get up and carry your family. Where are you going to? We are going for a Hillsong conference in Australia. You mean it? Yes. Yes, sir. We are going there and we are sitting down. He said, you mean this is how your whole life? He said, this is how it is, so." I don't know about you i so thank god i'm a man because you can design the life the way ladies don't feel bad just just pray that's that's it i will never spend my life bowing to the statue of nebuchadnezzar no sir no sir hmm. how can i call on your name and end up in shame no way no way how can i bow down before you and then bow down before a man no way because you are my god Men may not believe it, they think we are jokers. But you are my God. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are my God. Romans chapter 8 and verse 18, let me round up. It says, For I record. That the sufferings of this present time brothers and sisters i am not unaware of the pain you are going through i'm not a fool i know that there are constraints there are pains that you are going through but my bible greater than any constitution of any republic the bible says for i know i reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory doxa that shall be revealed the weightiness of God in us in us the Bible says for the earnest expectation of your family of your lineage not just of creation listen some of you are listening to me and the devil is telling you don't mind that man it has never been done in your lineage go and study it and God says you are the one I'm raising on I'm raising you to make a spectacle to principalities and powers that causes can be subdued that yokes can be broken listen God is looking for men that he's looking for a generation he said this is the generation that seeks thee let me tell you there is a generation that will seek God as a vocation not now there are individuals there are churches but there will come a generation an age range where what they do is to seek god church services every day every day not just on sunday as one convention is finishing another one is starting and you can attend it because you have conquered the forces that keep men busy
bowing down to the status of Nebuchadnezzar what to eat what to wear that's what drives people to walk in the morning you are supposed to walk but the purpose is not just make your ends meet it's a revelation of the glory of the father disabuse your thinking from this servitude mentality god wants to raise us but it will happen by engaging his systems lift your voice and begin to pray lord i exempt myself 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 through knowledge shall the just be delivered there is a generation that will serve god there is a generation that will seek the god of jacob not seeking money not seeking power we will conquer wealth we will conquer all the things that distract men so that the only time that will be left is in advancing the course of the kingdom and improving the living of men pray listen i look forward to times where our doctors will set up hospitals that are 10 times the size of shika and everybody who comes half the price was already covered by a kingdom financier yes sir for a hospital not a church not a church you meet someone and there is a surgery happening that person is about dying because they don't have money here comes a kingdom financier what did you say is happening i love god and i love his creation too much please treat the person listen let me tell you this please don't ever think i'm just making noise this is prophecy it will happen you 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 may throw yourself out but it will happen hallelujah a time in the history of the church where there are men who walk to reveal the glory of god they are so blessed they don't discuss money again hallelujah i heard about the net worth of one very funny person like that and the thing pained me because i read an article about a church that was building their cathedral and the amount was so meager they borrowed loan from a bank and the bank was harassing them harassing the pastor they wrote all kinds of things and insulted the man and they said the man plunged into depression and died i think it was last week or week before last when i had that thing it pained me i said in the vision god showed this guy death was not part of it all it was something that killed this man yet there is someone answering the kingdom of darkness and has more than hundred times what that church is praying for please don't tell me that is the will of god get up in the morning you are doing this job today you are doing this one tomorrow god calls you say sorry god i have to pay my child school fees no sir some of our parents may not have gotten it right we don't have to mock them but you have to stand and say lord for the sake of my children i will pay this price lift your voice and pray lord i pay the price if my father if my mother knew better they would do better but now that i know this oh god i will pay the price i will pay the price lift your voice i will pay the price no joking with my life i will pay the price i will pay the price lift your voice and pray engaging the systems of the kingdom not only believing them not only having access to them hallelujah hallelujah i like you to lift your voice and cry that the spirit of disobedience the spirit of spiritual laziness that does not allow you engage the word you just keep wishing no no sir no ma lift your voice and pray lord the grace to put the word to work lord i confess i've not been a faithful tighter pray i i stop playing games with my destiny tonight lord i confess my prayer life has gone down 
my world life has gone down lord i confess i'm not serious with my destiny as a gentleman god has called me into ministry but i'm not giving it the attention it requires they're admiring people fighting people gossiping and trying to make a name for myself i settled down with destiny 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 hallelujah listen let me give you a little assignment when you go back home tonight i want you to write specific goals things you are doing this issue of doing everything mm -mm. i'm on a mission to rising financially i'm on a mission to knowing god i'm on a mission to accessing the healing anointing don't just study randomly and move. no write things the lord is calling me into ministry and he told me the ministry is starting february next year but from now till february i am engaging this i need to know the mystery behind speed i need to know what keeps members you write it and sit down I've, I've not been faithful in tithing that means i've not had a revelation about it the issue is not just to carry money and start running the issue is to sit down and say this month i'm going to take a course i'm going to take a study on it who has written books in this area and you sit down who has done a very comprehensive balanced not hungry manipulative teaching on it and you study that's how you grow you carry your issue of concern put it before you close your eyes to every other thing until that mountain crumbles don't leave it that's how winners work but all this one of try today if it's too hard you turn this direction you will still meet it there stay there and win did you hear what I said? stay there and win let me tell you in my little life i can tell you there is no mountain that is not surmountable it's a lie don't listen to anybody that talks to you like that is not your friend don't go near them again i want you to write a list of the mountains before you pray dance but sit down there's got to be a way there's got to be a way you read a book you check something there's got to be a way then you enjoy the beauty of triumph brothers and sisters triumph is sweet when you conquer your challenges you live as if satan does not exist there is such a realm it is my desire with all my heart among other things that god will bring not just this ministry he has helped in a measure not just me but every one of us not just to a level of spiritual awakening i am trusting god for an avalanche of do you know how you conquer poverty like you put it under your feet this is what god would do in this ministry and with people and you watch people serve god all this obsession for money that runs people to hell ladies marrying for money brothers doing this people leaving god for money all kinds of nonsense and we can focus on god then there will be prayer altars afresh that seek god for him not for what he can bring there will be men and women who can study there are some of you there are books locked up in your spirit for nations but suffering will not let those books come out because all you are thinking now is oh god let me just look for something to eat we depress ourselves and have high blood pressure to death whereas there is a way a noble way where you spend your life at the end of your life like david you say like like um paul you say i have fought the fight good fight i have finished my course you have poured yourself like a drink offering nothing left again are we together the last prayer point and we're done for this night i like you to cry and say god hold my hands and insist that i don't stop until i get to the des the place of destiny hold my hands i ask you to he held the hands of peter some of you in your in your in your in your quest to obey god you have seen things no dive in your life cry and say lord hold my hands hold my hands hold my hands oh god 
stop me from sinking and lift me up use my life as a spectacle to show what you can do with the anointing to show what you can do with influence to show what you can do with men and women who are passionate about agenda I will search for you and I will find you I will find you with all my heart I will lift my hands to you in worship and I will worship with all my I'm leading a generation to seek him Lord we will search for you and we will find you we will find you with all our hearts we will lift our hands to you in worship and we will worship listen rounding up before i make the altar call listen to me i want to encourage hold on guys i want to encourage every brother here you're a brother when you go back home this night please please do this go and get a notebook sit down use this weekend please thank god there, there's there's holiday today tomorrow sunday even if it's one hour please just do what i'm asking you to do find somewhere alone everybody say alone not with your neighbor not group find somewhere alone whether it's one forest somewhere or outside near one tree one dam somewhere and just sit down with a notebook and a paper don't carry any book just go and stay there and say holy spirit i'm rededicating my destiny not my life to you you are the only one who can help me this ministry you are giving me this business this life this family is too much for me i am ready to receive your wisdom and you it will shock you what god will do for you in that retreat don't do it sitting in your room or your parlor no 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 find a place go somewhere if you see someone there find another corner somewhere one grass somewhere one uncompleted building of a school somewhere just hang around somewhere even if it's for one hour take a time of inventory the way i'm living my life am i going to make it are we together this is called self-supervision sit down the way i'm running my family are we going to rise this way the way i'm living my life am i going to be great this way the the time i am giving god will this time really birth his glory in me and then come up by the spirit with resolutions the lord will show you areas the lord will show you things ladies you can do it too i'm not saying it's, it's just for guys and then ladies lazy around this is everybody's destiny carry a notebook flog it out somewhere let me tell you the second thing i want you to do please hear me and don't be offended with what i'm telling you you have to search for the names and numbers of certain people and delete them out of your phone i repeat you have to search for the names comma and the numbers of certain people and do what delete them out of your phone i promise you being a friend of everybody will not give you your destiny are we together there are people who are not bad they are not demonic but they are too distracting to accommodate them their, their, their distraction to your destiny is not worth it. Let them be. The day you rise, you can always recall them. But for now, you are on a project. Some of you may need to trust God to get a place, whether off you or get a small room with somebody. You, you just need to pay whatever price it will take to allow you to build this great destiny. Are we together? Yes. Some of you may need to minimize certain useless visitations. Visitations that don't make sense. From pillar to post, flying around. No. Some of you may need to minimize movies. I'm not saying movies are wrong. Don't, don't misunderstand me. 
But let me tell you, you are not going to spend your whole life watching movies and you make it in life. No, sir. Is that true? Some of us may need to minimize sleep. 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 Snore your way, time is going. But this is, Bible says, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the arm, poverty comes upon you like an arm bandit. Some of us may need to minimize food. Please, I'm not saying starve yourself, don't get me wrong. But I'm telling you, gluttony is killing some of us. Killing some of us. Some of us need to reduce your three phones to one. The two are not doing anything. They are distracting you. Distracting you. Some of you need to reduce the number of social media platforms. Except you are there maybe on business or something. You are on every social media platform. Your phone is beeping per second per second. Some of us may need to off our phones. That's what you need. For that one, two hours. Off it. There is nothing that is too urgent. Off it. And spend time with God. These are the things that distract people who have potentials of greatness. The Holy Spirit wants to make greatness out of people. But we keep getting distracted. If you can pay this price, I press you. You may not like me now for what I'm telling you. But tomorrow you will see me and say, thank you, sir. The person who loves you is the person who tells you the truth. No matter how uncomfortable. I love you too much to leave you the way you are. There is a level of anointing you must enter. There is a level of influence you must enter. I want God to do business with you. That he, you will rise to become a voice for his majesty. This is what he's looking for. Father, we give you the glory tonight. You have challenged us tonight. This is more than a sermon. This is the heart of God pounding on your destiny. The Lord is challenging us very truthfully and seriously. Tonight, there are ladies and gentlemen, men and women standing here. Whilst you heard me teach, the Holy Ghost began to speak to you that you need to correct your life and run to Jesus. Now, please, everyone keep standing. No movement. There are people in this place tonight that are saying, Lord, I need to run to you. Perhaps you are coming here for the first time. And you have always laughed at men of God every time they made altar calls. The Lord is speaking to you that tonight is your own turn. Or at one point you have given your heart to the Lord. But things just went haywire. Your life scattered and you joined it and just, you know, destroyed the path of glory that you were following. Followed friends, followed every kind of thing, made a mess of your life. And you are saying, man of God, can he receive me back? Absolutely. And tonight, wherever you are, our time is gone. I want you to take a bold and a serious step. A bold and it must be serious. You must come here meaning it from your heart. Wherever you are, inside, outside, please, I'd like you to make that bold step right now and come up even as we appreciate them. Quickly. Quickly. Lord, I'm tired of playing games with my life. You're welcome. Quickly. Let's clear the way for them as they are coming. Please encourage them. Encourage them. Apostle, I've always been a nice guy. It's just that I can't remember making this altar call. Join them. Join them. I'm not sure my father is a pastor. I've grown in a pastor's house. Join them. Join them. Please join them. Whether I overflow one, two, three, wherever you are, join them. God bless you. Apostle, I don't want people to see me. Forget about that. Please join them and come. Join them quickly. Keep coming. Above him there's no other. Jesus is way. Jesus is the answer for the world today please allow them come if they are coming keep coming above him there's no other if you are still joining them please rush and come those of you who are here i truly congratulate you with all my heart i know that you are standing here some of you are handing your life over to jesus for the first time some of you are rededicating your life it doesn't matter let me tell you jesus is not a religion Jesus is not an opinion. He is life. He will truly 
give you a new beginning hallelujah now lift your right hand and say after me very clearly say lord jesus say it again lord jesus i love you with all my heart i come before you tonight just as i am i ask you to forgive me to cleanse me to give me a new beginning i declare that you are lord of my life you are my savior you are my king i receive eternal life tonight into my spirit and i declare that from tonight i'm a child of god i am saved i am delivered in the name of jesus keep your hands lifted lord jesus who but you is able to save men who but you is able to show mercy and grace lord i decree and declare that these ones who have come unashamedly standing before you and standing before your people let this be a new beginning for them in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven and i declare that the power of satan sin hell the grave is broken over your life i decree and declare that the grace to live a victorious life the hunger for god and for the things of god is planted in your heart tonight from today you will go higher and higher and higher in the name of jesus christ thank you lord jesus i declare that the lord himself will bless and honor and lift you in jesus name i pray amen now um please all of you i want you to follow there is a gentleman that will be waving his hands um this lady my dear look at me you i want you to meet pastor alpha hmm? this girl while they are going meet pastor alpha please i want you to personally counsel this lady hmm? i saw something that please you counsel her and god will help you in the name of jesus christ god bless you please all of you god bless you god bless you let's appreciate them very quickly dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salmon and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of jesus christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus I'll see you again bye